Oh, dear. You try, try not to swear too much this time. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on that note, hello and welcome to episode 39 of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage, coming to you, as always, from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer, uh, going a bit outside the box with our latest episode sponsor, a new partner of ours, Hebe Beauty Bar. I will actually have an on-location interview with owner Kendra Newman coming up in just a bit, so stay tuned for that. I'm Ted Emmett. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And a special hello again, or for the first time, to anyone tuning in on Rogers TV. Yeah, maybe for the first time, maybe for the second time. Uh, maybe we're not even, maybe they didn't give us a second episode. At the time of recording this, I don't know, but uh, I guess we'll see. A uh, little bit of a smaller crew tonight, Andrew and Dustin both unsurprisingly could not be here again tonight. Uh, we're kind of used to that by now. But also co-worker Erin decided that uh, parenting was more important than podcasting, so she is not here tonight. But uh, good news, though, for the king of mad gabs, uh, to my right here, Kevin Strybosch. Uh, you get to do the ad reads tonight, uh, but they're all real words, so you should be okay. Perfect. Just don't waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I finally. Got it. One uh, month later. Yeah, and welcome, I, welcome back, because I wasn't sure if you'd come back after that last episode. That uh, you, really, you really took that hard. Yeah, I did. It was That was really tough for me, actually. I was quite embarrassed, still am, um, <laughs> and I realized I was the title of the uh, episode which usually, usually I find that's a good thing, but in this case was absolutely not a good thing. It's still an no, honor though. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know what? It, I what, guess. It doesn't matter yeah. if you, it's embarrassing or not. At least you get featured. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and hey, speaking of short guys, uh, we weren't, but uh, I don't really have a segue. Uh, Kevin Walsh, how's it going? You're getting worse. <laughs> that's all right. And uh, You're getting taller though. Yeah, thank you. I'm almost as tall as Ryan Lund. Oh, you got lifts True on? story. Almost. Yeah. True story. Um, I'm good, Ted. How are you? Oh, wow. No one ever asks. I, I'm great. I, uh, you know what, saved a lot of time not writing good jokes for the beginning of this podcast episode and I, I had a, a good nap and I know you're probably not so great because the weather's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it has been very windy. I, I, thought, I thought of you in the bad weather. Like, just Kevin, one one day, outside. I wish we would get some wind. It just <laughs> oh. hasn't ha hasn't been windy enough for me. Well, hey, the Red Deer windsurfer community though is having a great <laughs> spring so far. Yeah, get it. <laughs> it's, hey, do you not like the wind because you'll blow away? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I've been golfing in it. Or anytime oh, you're outside, yeah. it's just blowing in your yeah. face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe hopefully by the time this comes out, maybe it's a little nicer out. But uh, hey, I'm just going to segue again right into, you don't need an introduction, Ryan Lund. Uh, just you do you. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's Ryan. Uh, get to bed. <laughs> no, no, no. Watch the end of this episode and then get to bed. <laughs> Don't forget we're still doing a podcast too. Okay. Well, yeah, for our listeners, get to bed. <laughs> Listen to the end and then go to bed. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Important, yeah. important. Just get your sleep in. Get your eight hours. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least, a uh, big shout out as always to Riley at Communal Creative Studios for being here tonight. Uh, as always, kind of babysitting us in a very quiet last time too. I almost forgot he was here. So we'll see if we can go two episodes in a row without him just fucking around in the background. <laughs> yeah, at least he's got a shirt on this time. No. <laughs> and, and you too, now that we've gone to TV, you've started actually wearing clothes yeah. for this podcast. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Can, it, can you guys see my full body? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now that introductions are out of the way, let's kick things off the way we always do with the Glad Game. Kevin, this well, is your that, moment. That's me. Yeah. The Glad Game is brought to you by Alberta Asian Motor Works and Alberta European Motor Works, family owned and operated in Red Deer for over 15 years, offering full service for all Asian and European makes and models. Learn more at aemw.com and aamwrd.com and follow them on social media. Laser focused. Nice. Oh. <laughs> all right. For the Glad Game, I think let's talk about <clears throat> something that's kind of all encompassing for the the month of June. It will be closer to the end of the month when this episode comes out or maybe you're listening to it after. But I'm just always glad when Pride Month rolls around and to see especially the city of Red Deer uh, like as a city, everyone as a whole too, just every year kind of uh, gets more and more into it and celebrates Pride Month more and more, uh, the, the awareness of it. Uh, right from Mayor Ken, right? Everyone in 
the city. But, you know, Red Deer, it's always going to be tough wherever you go. And Red Deer gets that rap, right? That honestly, that, hey, we're just a bunch of rednecks, no tolerance. But I, I feel like more and more uh, every year when Pride Month especially rolls around that we are uh, making some headway. Yeah, I, I think in recent years, it seems like um, I know it's a big fight and it's going to continue to be a fight. But it seems like just that that culture and acceptance of for everybody is becoming more ingrained in everyday life. Um, I was talking to a friend who uh, has a middle school age child who's transgender um, and I asked him how it's going and he's like, it's awesome. The school is really supportive, all the students, friends, like there's really no issues, which I was kind of shocked to hear. I just assumed that there'd be, you know, some bullying or stuff like that. But um, yeah, he said it's been super positive. So I think that just goes to show that society is kind of like turning the page and just jumping on board with just accepting everybody. Yeah, I mean, school is school's always tough. But for any adult out there that kind of wants to argue or protest, like, like it's just such a waste of time. Who cares? Doesn't um, affect Doesn't you. affect yeah. you. It's got to be exhausting being angry at everybody else's, yeah. <laughs> what everybody Life, else does. Yeah. Like, I don't know where these people find the time to, to protest uh, mm-hmm. random things. So, I, I think that's what they do with their time. So, then it's just like, I don't know, to me, that's a shitty way to spend your life. Yeah. But, yeah it's like it's a hobby. Almost, yeah. which is kind of funny. Kind of yeah. people get really wrapped up in it. Yeah, yeah, which doesn't affect us, you know, as a podcast. I think from day one, we've let it known too that we're in full support of Pride Month of the LGBTQ plus community. And yeah, I just thought, especially with some things going on, again, we're not going to get too deep into politics, but at the provincial level right now too, just to see the the city of Red Deer really get behind Pride Week, um, and not just the city, but the people in it, uh, is is always nice to see. And hopefully, again, for all of us. We, we don't really know what it's like, obviously, uh, being outside observers. So I'm, I'm sure there's still a lot of work to do, but hopefully uh, every year we get a little bit better. Well said. Good. Also All glad right. that Lund's wearing pants. <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm not. <laughs> We're shorts. No. <laughs> Showing off those calves. Made yeah. you look. I'm trying to get a calf contract. Show them off. Show them off. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone out there needs a calf model. Lund's wondering if we can get a uh, calf ISO cam yeah. for oh, the man. podcast just on his legs the whole well, time. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it. Wri- write a letter. Okay. Yeah. It's, I think we had money in the budget. Get a hold so. of us at Oh Dear. And we'll, yeah. we'll just look, look at those it. baby cows over there. Man, these things are, these things are going to produce some money. So, yeah. <laughs> be stupid not to. Yeah. Just talk to Rogers, man. Yeah, those calves were made for TV. I'll tell you that much. Don't I know it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to our feature interview. As I mentioned, Hebe Beauty Bar is our episode sponsor. And this is actually one of the rare occasions where we've uh, not only have an on-location interview, but actually hasn't happened yet, uh, as we're going to go do it tomorrow, so the day after recording this, uh, to not only interview Kendra and nurse injector Samantha, but at least a few of us are probably going to get some treatments while we're there. Uh, Maybe some Brotox, as she called it. Uh, They do like the laser hair removal. We don't really know uh, what we're in for. We don't know how this interview is going to go, but uh, here it is. All right. Well, we are on a uh, on location interview. It's been a little while, but we are at Hebe Beauty Bar uh, with owner and nurse injector Kendra Newman and nurse injector Samantha Stacy. Uh, first of all, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having us here all piled in here. We have a co-worker, Aaron Lund, uh, Dustin. Welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, My goodness. thanks. Uh, and, cool. and the athlete, Kevin Strybosch, who we, the youngest guy we found out needs the most work. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, thank you for having us. And uh, yeah, Maybe just first off, tell us a little bit about Hebe Beauty Bar, uh, the history and what you do. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, Hebe Beauty Bar. I started with the name Hebe. It's the Greek goddess of the fountain of youth or youthfulness. So I, I thought, so. okay, that's... <laughs> I was like, that's kind of fitting. And also, you always kind of want your business name to be short and easy and everybody remembers it. So Hebe is pretty easy. People are like, oh, TV, TV, right? Um, so that's kind of why I came up with the name. Uh, I've been a nurse, I think, for nine-ish years. I can't even remember. When I was um, working at the hospital, neurology stroke unit, I kind of realized floor nursing probably isn't going to be my forever gig. So I took a course in 2017 for Botox and fillers. And then it just kind of just kept going. I really, really loved the industry. So I started working 
Red Deer was pretty much unheard of to do Botox and filler in 2017. So I actually had to work in Calgary for about three, three ish years before I felt competent enough to come out here and uh, open my own business. So then after that, um, we've been here for about two and a half, almost three years. And that's how long Sam's also been with us. So yeah, yeah. and I just begged her. <laughs> to take me in. She, yeah, she, she, her husband was actually friends with me when I was like 18. And then she reached out and was like, Hey, can I shadow you? Can I shadow you? And then she just kept on being like, Oh, I'm just going to come. I'm just going to come. And she just kept coming. And then she's like, When are you going to open your own place? When are you going to open your own place? And I'm like, Oh, geez. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So here we are. <laughs> so great job, obviously, Risk, risking you know, starting a new business and taking that risk. Um, you guys have been doing a great job. I hear, hear about this and see it on social media. And, and now being in here, it's, it's a great vibe that you guys have. But I guess my question is, how many years did you think about starting your own business? And how has it been going since you've been open? Great question. Uh, zero. <laughs> my husband is a very go-getter. Uh, he's Dutch go-getter, do it, right? So like I took the course and I loved it and I loved where I was working and I was like, I just want to stay in my safe space here. And he was like, no, we're opening a business. We're doing this. Like, look at your potential. Look at your... So him. Uh, so I did it. <laughs> Thank Dave. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah. So I mean, I never thought about being a business owner, especially when I was going to nursing school. I was like, I'm going to help people. I'm going to do that. So it's definitely changed but I wouldn't take anything back. I'm just grateful that he supported me because I wouldn't have done it without him. Well, I know, I know, Aaron, I know you really want to talk about, well, especially Botox. Maybe take us through <laughs> the, a couple of the, th well, that was your words, not mine, <laughs> but uh, like, take us through a couple of the, th the uh, different treatments that you do offer here. So we first started off just injectables, um, not just, but injectables. So me, myself, Sam and Ronell are all registered nurses that do Botox or Dysport. So those are two different types of neuromodulators. Um, don't want to get into big detail, but there are, I think, four FDA approved neuromodulators. There was one, but then I heard just yesterday it was taken down. Anyways, neuromodulators relax the muscle. Everybody calls it Botox, but they do have different names. Um, and then dermal fillers like hyaluronic acid. So that's when people People are like looking to contour their cheeks or enhance their lips. Um, we also do skin boosters to rehydrate the area. And then Sculptra, which is a PLLA lactic acid. So that is actually inducing your own collagen production, which is a really nice natural filler result. And then in the back now, we do like chemical peels, facials, laser hair removal, pigmentation, RF microneedling, kind of all of that. So we're trying to become the one-stop shop. <laughs> yeah, more holistic approach to yes. all of your um, anti-aging needs. And do not forget skincare, everybody, mm. because 80% of My your bad. anti-aging is done at home with your skincare. Sunscreen, please. <laughs> Good thing I'm not wearing shorts because you might tan like <laughs> right? I'm not wearing sunscreen. But I have a question about skincare. There is all these TikTok kids at like 12 and 13 doing these crazy skincare routines. When do you want to start building those habits? And when do you need to start adding in kind of the heavier things that old faces need? Like, is it healthy when you're 12 years old to be doing a full like eight to 10 product skincare routine, will that save you in the future or were no. you, you're okay? <laughs> no, but I, I will say like from another perspective, it is like you said, routine, mm -hmm. like those TikTok kits, teen boppers or whatever, they're not using high quality products. Most right. likely like they're using like Shopper Sephora or I don't know, like an Avon brand, their medical ingredients aren't as potent and they don't deliver product deep into the dermis. So it's sort of just like an on the surface, like, oh, it might look cute. That's about it. So I wouldn't be too worried. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it necessary? No, but it's getting them into a healthy routine for adulthood. So those clients, when they come in, in their like 25, 30, we're going to have a lot easier of a time getting them hooked on good yes. skincare. And they're already going to understand that you can't just wash your face with soap and go and put like one cream on. They're going to get like, oh yeah, vitamin C is good. Retinol is good. Like they're going to understand those concepts. I know a lot of young people will do preventative treatments or Botox. Like when should you start? What When is the point that you want to start looking at the lines on your face and doing something about it or no lines on your face and trying to preserve that? Yeah. So, I mean, preventative people can be a little extreme with that, I would say. So, if you're somebody and you look at your parents and both of them have 
have like this line mm-hmm. and you're starting to see it stay at rest. So when we're born, we have dynamic lines and those are the lines in motion. So you lift your forehead, you see lines, but then at rest, they fully go away. Years and years of dynamic motion turn those into static lines. And those are the lines that are embedded into the muscle. When you're at the static line stage, you are more corrective than preventative and Botox or Dysport doesn't work as good. So I would say if you're young and you're noticing like that one line is just hanging out longer than you would like it to doing a treatment, but doing a light treatment and maybe every six months if you're really young, right? Um, But I would say you really want to start the skincare before even that. So like sunscreen, vitamin C, stuff like that. So then you're not spending an arm and a leg later on in the future. But I would just say once you're kind of noticing that muscles like those lines are sticking around at rest or kind of starting to, that's when you're definitely going to want to most likely start treatments. Um, You mentioned the long list of services that you provide. So I'm curious, how much do you know about all those services before and how much have you had to learn since you started and you opened the business? I feel like I pretty much don't purchase anything unless I do it myself. So I've done everything. I do a lot of research, obviously, like there's so many companies out there and the reps can be ruthless. So I would just say, obviously, we learn as we go, but we're very aggressive with like the scientific backing and like what kind of support system they have. So we just very much focus on making sure that this machine is like in Durham clinics. Is it in somebody's basement? I don't want a machine that's in somebody's basement. I want a machine that's only at doctor clinics, high end clinics. So just doing more research and just not running and buying everything that you see on social media, because there's a lot of bad stuff out there. And as an employee of Kendra's, her philosophy is education, like huge on education. So every time we do get a device or any type of new product that comes in, she's got people coming in to educate us on it. We've got, you know, like online webinars, like everything like that. So that's really great because I'm background was mental health. (laughs) So I didn't really know anything about the skin because you don't learn about that as much in nursing. So huge learning curve, but she provides such good education at this clinic. So So with all the different services, putting on a client or a patient's hat, what does the first initial visit look like? Is it like a consultation? Like, I don't really know what I want, but I want to look younger. I want laser hair. What do I like? How does that look, I guess, for a first time client? Yeah. So, I mean, usually when we do our initial consultation, it's they sit in a chair and we just, I hand them a mirror and I say, what's bothering you? You know, <laughs> and, <wrong> <laughs> Every, well, and, yeah. and some people will say like, oh, I hate my eyes or like, oh, I hate these lines here. Like I find older people like this area, just they hate, 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 right? Men, a lot of times it's their eyes. So obviously I'm going to view them and I'm going to see what I think they should do but I'm not going to also attack them for something that might not bother them. Like some people don't mind their forehead lines. They're like, I don't care about these lines. It's my under eyes that bother me. I'm like, then let's focus there. Yes. Would you benefit from a bit of something up here? Yes. But that's when we can like introduce skincare and say like, let's focus on your eyes. But hey, if you put some retinol up here, we're going to get kind of the best of both worlds without insulting you and making you leave being like, oh my gosh, she just told me like, I need to do everything. (laughs) So I would just say like, we don't really attack an area unless they point it out. And then we give them multiple choices, right? So the nice thing is now that we have machines, we can say, okay, for your under eyes, you can do PRP, which is we draw your own blood and we re-inject into the area. So that's going to help with the darkness, discoloration, fine lines and wrinkles, and it's natural. So not a lot of concerns, right? And then we can work our way up to fillers. Fillers is a hyaluronic acid. It's synthetic. So when we put it into an area, it's going to rehydrate the area and you'll see results for, let's say, 12 to 18 months. But if you're like, I'm not an injectable kind of person, then you go to the other room and you do either laser facials to help tighten the area or you do microneedling to help induce collagen and elastin production. So it's very much uh, just kind of figuring out what the client's concerns are and then also budget you can do a lot. So it's figuring out if they're at 200 bucks, okay, let's do some Botox or let's go get you on a good eye cream. If they're like 3000, like, okay, let's get you back. Let's do some RF microneedling. So yeah, yeah. consults differ for everybody. 100%. So not one consult is ever going to look the same as another consult. And sometimes clients come in and they genuinely have no idea what they want. And at that point, I'm usually like, what's your favorite part? 
of your face Mm -hmm. and then be like, oh, it's my eyes. And, you know, they're starting to get a little bit of sagging here. It's like, well, let's like emphasize your eyes. Let's open them up as much as we can because you love your eyes already. So why don't we just like make you love them more? So every console is going to be different. It's going to be a lot of education. But it's nice to know too that you obviously you don't have to come in and get get torn apart. But we're going to give you permission right now to to <laughs> attack us because we are going to do a little bit as you called it, bro talks today. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of the four of us, uh, us men, who do you think needs it the most? You're the most dynamic for sure. <laughs> as you're sitting Dustin. there, <laughs> she said dynamic. That's. <laughs> Or who would show the best results like before and after? I really want you to say the young guy. I, I sitting would say Kevin right, or yeah. Dustin just because um, you guys are doing a lot more movement. Like Ted, yeah. your face, you, you don't do a lot of like facial expressions, whereas Dustin the whole time is very active. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just said you got a resting bitch face, buddy. <laughs> I, yeah, I might. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's where it's held up. So maybe there that's that's why. Yeah. But let's maybe talk about that for a minute because we've been um, working with Red Stag a lot. I've been talking about women being in traditionally male or masculine spaces, and a lot of times when you think about trying to look more youthful and all of you know brighter and all of the things, you think that that's a traditionally female space. So how? How do you, I don't know what the question here is, but it's like. Oh, how do you open up the space to more men? Yeah. 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 I'm just, I'm just wondering like giving men who might be listening a a kind of permission to come in and get a consultation and see what could be done to give them the results that they want. Because I, I just, I think of it so much as a female space, but know that there are a lot of men who can benefit from a lot of the different services you offer, even when it comes to skincare or a chemical peel because they have acne scarring or things like that. So I guess I I don't really have a question. I just want to talk a little bit more about men in Well, do you you get a a lot of men or is it, again, still that obviously probably the market that you're after more. Right. So I would say a lot more females come in for sure. I feel like sound gets more men hmm. for some yeah. reason. <laughs> and they're just left with a dry. <laughs> like, you know what? They're like, hmm, Sam, I'll it's book with her. <laughs> and now I do get males in the chair and sometimes they're like, do other guys do this? And they need a little bit of reassurance. But a lot of my cl- male clients are like the guys driving the Harleys. UFC bikes, fighters. Lawyers, like yeah. big businessmen. They're all coming in. So I'm like, those are like, you know, in society, typically you're like, oh, man's man. Yeah. It's like, well, men's men get to treat themselves too. They get to pamper themselves too. And those are the guys that are coming in. Um, so it's for everybody. Yeah. Like you are allowed to love your face. You're allowed to age gracefully. You don't have to suffer with that one mind that drives you your butt crack or whatever, you know, like yeah. 11. You don't have to suffer with that. If it bugs you, get in and do something about it. It's totally fine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we do like, I would say definitely more women, but we have a lot of guys too. Yeah. And the odd ones need a little reassurance, but it's for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, looking good's for everybody. What too, like, because you mentioned you do laser hair removal and I've I've had that done before. Is that something like you see more men for that maybe? Yeah. Than, so than I would else? say yeah. the majority of men usually would come in for Botox, like around the eyes seems to really bother men. So Botox around the eyes are just upper face in general. Tear trough filler, their eyes seem to bother them as they age as well. And then also like we do, a lot of like hyperhidrosis and TMJ. So hyperhidrosis is when you have excessive sweating. So you can do it in your armpits, palm of your hands, your feet. You can really do it anywhere. Like Sam was saying earlier, like even if you put Botox in your forehead, you will decrease the sweat glands in your forehead. So a lot of men will do it for that reason. Uh, We do also have a lot of like wives or girlfriends that make their husbands come in. And then once they kind of see what the results are, like their wives or girlfriends will book them appointments. Like I have one client who always books in under his wife because he'll be like, oh, I think I need more Botox. And she'll be like, oh, I'll book you in with Kendra, right? (laughs) So I think a lot of times men think because it's a decent amount of money that, you know, they'd rather spend it on other things. So that too is kind of hard. But I would say there's a lot more men getting treatments. And once they get it, they realize like how natural and how good they can look without looking like, oh, you get 
work done, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's just more getting in and doing a, your first treatment and um, totally hair removal, very easy for men. Like you can also do like beard shaping, stuff like that. So that's more. And then, yeah, we do have clients, um, acne scarring, stuff like that. So the chemical peels, the microneedling for men, it's, it's more popular. I think a barrier for men is that men don't go around telling each other yeah. that they're getting these treatments yeah. where women not all women, but most women are more like, we're more open to share. But yeah, a lot of men aren't like sitting at the oil patch and being like, oh, guess what I did? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you look great. <laughs> what did you have yeah. done? I mean, we told everyone. That yeah. Was yeah. 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 So you <laughs> should. It's a more open conversation. It'll get more popular. Like, I literally have a, a male client that told me he was driving to work with guys in his truck, put it on speaker. And it was like, hi, blah, blah, blah. This is Hebe Beauty Bar. And then he said they all like teased him. But oh. then they all were like, what are you getting done? And they were yeah. actually excited about it. I think like as soon as the conversations open, men are happy to know that their friends are doing it. Since it's, I guess, a medication, do you ever have patients that, or do you ever see clients that you maybe are concerned they're getting too much done? Because uh, everyone's seen those horror or photos or videos of just it's people real who are housewives. Yeah. Yeah, the real so, high housewives yeah. kind of syndrome. Yeah. So do you ever see that or how do you prevent that? Or can you prevent that from happening? Well, we're lucky enough that um, we just say no. So we do know when a client sits in, and most of the time it's not Botox. So that's the medication. It's usually fillers that people go crazy on, right? When they have those huge lips, that's filler. It's all um, migrating up to your nose. Yeah. And it is unfortunate, but a a lot of people have that body dysmorphia where they're just like, oh, no, like, I don't even have any filler left. And you're like, <laughs> what? Here's um, a picture from your first appointment. Yeah. Yes. That's why before and afters are so important. Yes. So that you can refer back yeah. and be like, look at this, look at this. Mm -hmm. No, you are good. You're full. I say no to people at least once a week. Oh, yeah. So it's all right. Uh, and, and we're allowed to. Like, and I mean, once again, when you're building your name and stuff like that, you you want to take every client because you need the money, right? But then also you're like, I don't want my lips walking around out there being yeah. like, oh, Hebe did this. And you're yeah. like, don't, right? So now we're just very much just like, if if that's the look you're going for, there's definitely a clinic that can do it. We're just not going to be them. So it, it's, it's nice that we can do that, but it's unfortunate. And I do think bigger cities, like I was even looking in like the UK or whatever, like everybody's just looking <laughs> unique there. <Yeah. laughs> but that's also because you don't need to be a medical professional to do injectables there. So anybody can do it. Your lash tech can do it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a question I have. If you are looking to find a service provider, what should people be looking for so that they're not getting a fly by night, like a nurse who's taken one course and is ready to start doing Botox parties? Like, what should people be looking for to make sure they're coming to a reputable clinic? Look at your injector. What do they look like? Mm -hmm. If they're overfilled, they are going to obviously think that's aesthetically pleasing. So they may want to overfill you. And it's fine. Some people look great with a lot of filler. I've tried to make Sam make my lips bigger and she just won't. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I would say looking at your injector and also asking them like, okay, so you've been in the industry five minutes, 10 minutes, two, three years. A lot of times it's hard because you have to build clientele. And as a nurse working in the hospital, you make a lot more money than doing just this at the beginning. So, you know, if they're like, oh, I've been doing this for two years, once a month. I've been doing this for two years. Like Sam came in hot. She has worked very hard, but she also is like full time. Yeah. Like she was doing five days a week. So you want to find out like what your injector is doing. And I mean, social media, it's annoying, but you can look at it mm -hmm. and you can see like, are they going to conferences? Are they doing education? And what are their before and afters looking like? What product are they using? Are they educating me on what I'm getting done? Like we have so many clients that sit in the chair and I'm like, oh, so you had a treatment. What did you get? Well, I don't know. What product? I think they did here. And I'm like, for what? Like, so yeah. a lot of times, like, it's just good to like, ask your injector. If they can't answer those things, like, why are you treating me like this? Like, sometimes it may sound annoying, but your injector should have an answer for you. Yeah. So. And then like most injectors or reputable clinics will have their website, mm -hmm. right? So Hebe has a website. It says our team, you click on it. It will say the courses that Kendra has taken, I have taken, how many years in the industry, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then like you said, look on Instagram, check out before and afters. I know sometimes they're a little misleading, 
at times. We're great, I think. We're very <laughs> natural based here. Um, we never like overdo anybody. Yeah, like look at the website, look at their credentials. Technically, you can go on to so for nurses and doctors, and you can literally go on to like the Carnot website. You can check and make sure that I have an active license. You can see if I've had probations or any type of like discretions on my license. So you can really do research if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, and those are good ways to check out where you're going and making sure it's professional and you're getting good care. So just to build off that, not a question, more of a compliment to you ladies in the first, uh, what have we been doing this for, 20 minutes? Um, I consider myself kind of an average consumer in most areas, but I am severely undereducated in this field and like you skincare. Just ended up I don't even, I don't, I don't even, yeah. I don't even know if I've washed my face with soap before. Maybe that's why I have these crow's feet or lines on my forehead. But I think it's just important for people who are listening, the education that you guys provide in the initial consult and as you go through and just what I've learned today, the difference between Botox, filler, I thought it was all the same. So I think a lot of people when they look to face and skincare and, and other services you guys provide, it's just come chat with you guys is what I'm hearing. Like just come, come learn more about it. And, and I think you guys from what I've just learned have done a great job with that. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I think building off of that too, do you, do you find, cause I know especially for like us uneducated men who know nothing about this area, what we know about, especially Botox is from like a sitcom or a movie, right? Where there's that stigma around it that no matter if you get Botox once, it's going to go bad, that type of thing. Do you uh, have a lot of people coming in with that stigma as well? Or is that started to, to go away and now more? Cause I, it does seem like almost every, one I talk to either knows about it or or, or does have it done. Yeah, I, I mean, even starting in 2017 to now has really changed, especially Red Deer. Red Deer was like, hush, hush, like we'll sneak you out the back door. Like we won't tell anybody. Like I remember getting Botox in Coaldale when I was going to university and they would sneak you out a back door because I was getting six units on my forehead and they didn't want people to know, right? Definitely it's opened up and a lot of times it will be their first time getting it and they're like, oh, I'm like going to do it and all my girlfriends are going to see and then they're going to decide if they want to do it. So there is still, you see social media and unfortunately a lot of it is lies. You do 20 units in your forehead, you're not going to look crazy. Yeah. But um, it's just to some people, they just kind of assume that like, oh, I'm going to look like a Kardashian if I do half a syringe of my lips. And it's like, that is so unrealistic. Like there's no way we could even do that if we wanted to. So yeah, just kind of, once again, just educating because so many clients come in thinking like, like I was saying, I had a client who came in who was like mother of the bride in like 13 days. And she was like, oh, well, I heard that it takes five to seven days to kick in. So am I too early? And I'm like, you should have come like a month or two ago because we want to see what your muscles do. We, we need to learn from your muscles. So I'm hoping it all goes well. But uh, yeah, really coming in and just getting that education because it's not what people think. Like I've probably had... Had, Sam's probably done like 10 syringes in my face in the last year, at least. And then Botox, Dysport, I usually get, we'll say about 100 or something every three months. Yes, clients are definitely more informed, but sometimes they're too informed or they think yes, they're yeah. too informed. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of clients now that come in and they're like, well, I need this and this and this. And you're like, no, no. <laughs> or my friend gets this, so I need to get that. And you're like, your friend and you have different faces. You know, um, even like we were talking about this morning, I've had... Um, I put a before and after of some lips and it was like a journey lips from a year ago to now and it's a huge change um, wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea they're a little bit bigger I think they're beautiful I wish I could have them and so are a lot of other people mm -hmm. so they're messaging me and they're like can I have these lips and I have never met them I've never seen them and I'm like long story short no because everyone's lips are different you know everyone has a different lip everyone's going to need a different product or a different amount of product. So um, sometimes the over education is difficult. So then we're re educating. But yeah. yeah. Let's talk lips and lip <laughs> flip, lip flip versus filler. And uh, I mean, yes. obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, case by case, but like, is a lip flip kind of like the gateway drug to filler or? So lip flips, um, I'm happy mine isn't as aggressive. So lip flips is with 
Botox neuromodulators, uh, Botox Dysport. Those are the two we use. So when you're doing a lip flip, what you're doing is four to six units on your top lip. So with a neuromodulator, what it does, we inject into a muscle, goes to the nerve ending, and it pretty much tells that muscle like, eh, let's not be as strong. The more we put into that muscle, the more that that signal is blocked. So with your top lip, you use it to talk and smile and all of that. So drink out of of straws. So um, mine has kicked in. So when I smile, my top lip can't tuck. Like I used to be able to tuck it really good. So when I smile, I actually can see more of a top lip. So some clients who have an overactive orbicularis muscle, when they get it relaxed, they see a little bit more of a lip at rest. And then when they smile, it can't tuck. Yes. So younger clients, people who have gummy smiles, those are clients 40 to $60 ish. You're going to see some results. However, it's going to feel weird. Whistling, sucking out a straw, blowing up balloons feels weird. So when it kicks in for the first like five to seven days after it kicks in, you're kind of like, it just feels unique, right? You're only going to get results for about six to eight weeks. So it's a very nice, but very quick, short, 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 yeah. short lived. But, and then when you're looking at filler, filler is a hyaluronic acid gel like substance we inject into an area to rehydrate, contour, fill. So the nice thing is, Hyaluronic acid is naturally built or we naturally make it and we also naturally dissolve it. So when we're born, we have hyaluronic acid and that makes us look young and youthful and all of this. Yeah, yeah. And then we have hyaluronidase, which is its nemesis, right? So as we age, our hyaluronic acid starts to deplete and our hyaluronidase starts to take over. So by the time we're 30, we're not producing hyaluronic acid. And if we are, it's very little. And then our hyaluronidase is eaten it all up. So when we're re-injecting synthetic hyaluronic acid, it's actually just evening out the playing field. So then your natural hyaluronidase is going to break it down within the next six to nine months. Some people are like, I had filler for two, three years. Yeah, you could. However, naturally, ideally, we want that hyaluronic or uh, hyaluronidase to dissolve it. Mm-hmm. So you will see results, let's say six to 12 months with lip filler. A lot of people, like we kind of talked about, don't stop and they just Every keep building. Every three months, we're going to keep yes. adding more. Yes. So they don't stop, but say you did half a syringe, you're going to get, let's say four to six months. If you did a full syringe, nine to 12 months. And then after that, you know, you can build if you want, but it is more expensive up front, but you do notice more results yeah. with filler. And just to be said, half a syringe usually is very underwhelming for 99% of our mm-hmm. clients. They come in and they're like, I don't want big lips to so start with a half. And then in two weeks, they're like, I wish I did a, a full. little more. Yeah. So, and the lip flip can be more dramatic and like exciting for a client. 100%. For some. Yeah. And then not for others. Like even if you look at Kendra and I, I don't need a lip flip. Yeah. I don't, I don't tuck at all. And I don't really think I have much filler in them actually. But I would be more like if I want to. I'm bigger, actually surprised you do have filler. Yeah. I like a, they, I have, they I look would say a little great. bit. Last time I got filler was before my wedding last yeah. summer. Okay. So like I really don't think there's much, much. in there yeah. anything. But for me, if I want bigger lips, filler is going to get me a yeah. bigger lip. Well, Kendra, <laughs> who has a littler top lip, yeah. a lip flip is actually quite incredible on her. Yeah. It gives yeah. her a lot of lift. It's quite dramatic. But she also has filler too because we want a little bit more. But right. So different client, different treatment is going to be, you know, give different results. Some people need both like Kendra. Some people can get away with one or the other and it's perfect. There will be a test on all of this, by the way, Justin. So <laughs> it's hope- just something I think about yeah. a lot with my lips. <laughs> yeah, that's Close it. enough. Yeah, you pass. Yeah. Before we get too far away from the lips, <laughs> out of the four of us, because I want to ask again, who who would benefit the most from? I know it's not you, not me. Yeah, Kevin's out of this one. The three Kevin of us. Kevin is the goal. Yeah, Kevin is. Yeah. Kevin's the after there. photo. Who yeah. who would benefit like do from lip filler? Do men get it a lot? Like, do, is that something men care about as much? I think Dustin's would be hard, so I don't want to do his lips. <laughs> yeah. <Why? You're- laughs> just just your anatomy, right? Like a lip flip would be great. Yeah. I think yeah, you can cities, do men do lips, they do chin, they yeah. do everything. I think Red Deer's a little behind. Would you agree? Yeah. Like Toronto, Calgary, that kind of thing. I have done lips on men. I have a few clients that have done lips. One client, it was literally for hydration. A little mm-hmm. bit older gentleman. He had probably your beautiful lips. But then, you know, 15 years later, 
they're a little deflated. So I didn't add volume. I just hydrated <laughs> his lips. So it just looks a little more youthful, but not as common here. But I, I do think it is more common in bigger cities. Mm-hmm. Um, just red tears a little, a little different. Mm-hmm. Do you guys do any treatments for, not for me, I'm fine, for but uh, yeah, for a friend, <laughs> um, for like the double chin, the under chin, like fat. Oh, I'm the friend, I think. No, yeah. you're not. You're not. But uh, I know there are treatments. There are. So the most common one, it's called Belkyra. So it's a deoxycholic acid. I guess I didn't bring this up when we do our treatments. So what deoxycholic acid is, um, you inject it into your adipose tissue and it pretty much blows up your adipose tissue and then your lymphatic system drains it out. So technically it is a permanent treatment. Everybody sees different results. So that's why it's a very like love hate treatment. Some people see like crazy, amazing results. Other people, it's not as dramatic. So it would kind of depend. So we have this muscle here. It's the platysma muscle. So as we get older, it likes to pull down as well. So if it's our platysma muscle, that's causing that like pull. Like me, I can like make a bullfrog. Actually, I don't know. Am I doing it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very impressive, actually. <laughs> so that's my muscle. That's not adipose tissue. Right. Whereas another client may not have that strong platysma, but they might actually have some fat. Yeah. Right. So it kind of depends on the client. If it is actually their adipose tissue, dissolving it, usually you do three treatments four to six weeks apart, and it will dissolve the majority of it. It is permanent unless you obviously gain a bunch of weight. And a lot of times it's genetics. Like there's nothing you can do about it. Like genetics just kicks your butt in that area. So even if you gain weight, lose weight, you still have that. So it is a great treatment for those clients. If you're somebody like me who does more of the bullfrog and I pull a lot with my platysma, the Nefertiti neck lift, which is um, a Botox treatment where you pretty much treat the platysma muscle. So you treat all the way along the jawline and then you treat down these bands and it just tightens everything up because as we get older, everything just kind of does this, right? So tightening that up will just straighten out your jawline a little bit and and it can mask the uh, under the double chin. Hmm. Have you guys ever gotten like really weird, like what's the weirdest request someone's come in to maybe fix that they've attempted to fix themselves or... Oh, don't fix things yourself. That we've (laughs) treated or turned away. Uh, I guess turned away. I guess turned away. That could be even. Yeah. yeah. I I would say that this, it seems like a weird request, but I don't know if it's that weird, but we've had requests for nipple talks. Oh, yeah. So Kim Kardashian back in the day talked about getting Botox in her nipples. So, of course, yeah, she's an influencer. So then people wanted to do that. So it was a little bit trendy a ways back. Not so much I used to do that. Yeah. Um, but we do get not always requested of that. I mean, we we will do it. It's not a big deal. But I mean, it just keeps your nipple basically erect. Yeah. It just keep yeah it keeps your n- nipple erect. But I would say there are people like if you want to find it, you can find it. And there are people who find filler on eBay or whatever and get it injected. And Sam actually oh, yeah. had a client who got filler here, which is extremely high risk um, to go were they, blind. Were they yeah. surprised? Were they surprised? <laughs> like all the time? <laughs> no. no. It would be it, like. I don't think it looked <laughs> aesthetically bad, but I don't think she understood like this How injector terrifying is a is? hairdresser and she did it like in her basement. Yeah. And like I, I don't need, did we end up dissolving? Like we were quite nervous to dissolve yeah. because I'm like, is it hyaluronic acid? If we're going in and we're trying to correct somebody's mistake, like most of the time we send them back to their provider. Yeah. But unfortunately, this was somebody who should not be providing it. Um, So I think that was a discussion with our medical director. I don't even recall we if did, we did. I did dissolve her lips because right. the same product was done on her lips and she had like large noticeable mm-hmm. bumps that were not in her lip. Like yeah. they were outside of her mm-hmm. lip and in her lip. And it, um, you know, we got approval. We had our medical director look at everything. We did like just kind of spot treating because again, we don't know where this product came from. Afterwards, I literally went on Amazon and put like hyaluronic acid to see if it was a thing. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. can't get it on Amazon. Oh. Well, we don't know what ingredients are in there, right? So mm-hmm. she actually did end up getting, we got rid of everything on her lips. We didn't touch her eyes. Again, like, you know. It's just too risky. Yeah. yeah. She should go to a dermatology clinic and see like a doctor that can ultrasound. Mm-hmm. Sound, um, right, go a little more in depth. Just like for us, it makes no sense to take that risk. Yeah when we didn't provide that first service. So, and she understood that she was fine with it. Yeah. yeah. I did also have um, a client who came in with her own filler um, and it was in a different language. And she was like, no, no, no. It says hyaluronic acid on here. Like, can you inject me with it? And I was like, mm-hmm. I kind of like my license. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she was like, can you just come to my house and inject me? And then she was trying to get me to map out where she should inject so she can oh, go no. home and inject it. Oh, no. So, um, 
people need to be aware, like if something goes wrong, a vascular occlusion, very rare, but if something goes wrong, your skin becomes necrotic and can die. So if somebody's putting filler here and it goes into your eye, you can go blind. And there are studies that show that that happens. So it's just unfortunate that you hear people doing stuff like that because you're like, come on. But it is what it is. The no education thing, right? People don't realize how serious. They don't realize that you need to come in and see practitioners that have had an advanced education, know your facial anatomy and know how to reverse complications. Yes. Right? So it's just... It's well, quite scary. And yeah. I imagine a lot of it too probably comes down to cost because any beauty treatment, whether you're having your hair colored or getting injections or a facial or whatever, it, it's not cheap and it shouldn't be. If it's too cheap, it's too good to be true. It's Don't like a tattoo. Yeah. You get what you yes. pay for. Yeah. But I saw you guys also have kind of some options for that with your memberships as well to kind of help those of us who keep thinking we should have Botox money and then spending it on other things, maybe save up that Botox money. Yeah. So we do have a new membership. Uh, we just launched it maybe a few months ago and it's actually been really good. So it's pretty much just a savings for you. Um, so it's $100, 250 and 400 a month. And so say you do the 100. So in three months, you have $300 saved to use towards any of your TB treatments or product. So then say somebody gets Botox every three months, they come in and they're like, Oh, I already got $300 off my treatment. Um, And then it also gives them perks with like skincare and stuff like that. So then we can get them to do their at home work. Right. Because skincare also is very expensive. But going to Sephora is also very expensive. Going to shoppers is very expensive. Yeah. Like anywhere you go is expensive. So it's just understanding like what products you should be using. And there's probably so much like fluff products out there that are doing nothing. So say you spend a good $100, $200 on a cream, but it actually gives you results. And then we also do have our apprentice nurse injector. So she's been injecting with us since I think September, October. Anyway, so she's been injecting for quite a while, but we still call her apprentice pricing because we're still supporting her through it. So she's also a little bit more affordable, but she doesn't do high risk areas. And then we're always in on the treatment or we're at least um, in the clinic to assist her if she needs it. So then she can grow into being an advanced injector. Yeah. The great thing too about the memberships is with that savings plan, we give you perks, Mm -hmm. right? So you get like a facial free on us um, so many times a year, depending on the tier of the membership you're in. And then like we're having an event June 20th for members only. Mm -hmm. And so it's like an appreciation event. So you get to come and, you know, we're going to spoil yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, because you're a member. So it is nice. Like, not only are you just saving, putting money away without thinking about it, yeah. you're also, you know, getting some free little extras. I guess on that note, too, because we're we're going to do something interesting today. I don't think we've ever done with an interview and kind of do an in-action thing. I know a couple of us are here to get Brotox. Uh, Aaron's going to get some Botox, too. So we'll get to that in a second. So before we do that, just uh, maybe a little more of a plug, like where people can find you. It's a great location here, a great, a great view of the river. And then I know you're very active on social media mm-hmm. too. So and website, pretty much a- anywhere uh, that someone can get a hold of you. Yeah. So, um, well, we have multiple different Instagrams, but our actual business one is hebe.beautybar. Um, and then our website is www.hebebeautybar.ca. And then, um, yeah, we're open Monday to Friday too. So you can always give us a call and Yeah. We're located in Riverside Plaza. Riverside Plaza. (laughs) Nobody knows where that is, but uh, once you find it, you know. It's the same building as Healthy Smiles. There you go. (laughs) That's how I tell you. And on the south side, too, because the first time I came, I couldn't, I drove around a couple times. The one ways. Until I found it. Uh, Yeah, I guess on that note, uh, we could still kind of keep the interview going and keep the questions going. I'm I'm already in the chair, Mm -hmm. so I guess I'm going to go first. And what's the process? I guess we're obviously going to do before photos, which I'm really mad about because (laughs) I have not had a pimple on my forehead and honestly 10 years and today of all days i got a little bit of a a zapper so you you might get credit for getting rid of that too with the after (laughs) photo but uh yeah i guess i guess we'll we'll get going with that Uh, my one question before though that i was thinking of because i was like oh i'm gonna do this i'm going golfing tonight like i don't know that that matters are there do's and don'ts once you uh like get an injection things that you shouldn't do for a certain amount of time by the look it looks like i should maybe cancel my tea time (laughs) I'm probably a little bit more cautious than other places. But what I always tell people is you cannot lay down for the next four hours 
no hot tub, no sauna, no working out today. So parts, <laughs> I was just yeah, going to go have a nap. But you have a cart. I think you're okay. Yeah. But I would say like for you, we're doing your forehead. So you can't wear a hat. If you are wearing a hat, you have to wear it really loose. So the idea is we're injecting Botox Dysport because we use Dysport most of the time into a muscle and we want it to stay in that muscle. So say you wear a hat and you're pushing mm. that product can move within the muscle, but can move up and down. If it moves up, that's fine. It's just going to decrease sweating, moves down, you get a ptosis. We don't want that. Is that what Frankenstein had? <laughs> like, Frankenstein? Yeah, because you had that big... That's no. what, just Why? He was Why also cut together yeah, from body parts. So not yeah, a great I don't example. Know what ptosis is. I'm just trying. Ptosis. So there's different types of ptosis. So a ptosis can come from too much Botox in the frontalis muscle or too low. So you're almost like this. Like a and dropped brow. Like a dropped mm. brow. Or you can get eyelid ptosis where your actual eye can't open. So that's usually from this area. And then brow ptosis is from the frontalis. So no hat. That is very rare. Yeah. There, it's not very common no. that those things no. occur. No, no hat, no nap before golf. This is going to be a tough day. Okay, I got one more question since you talked about Frankenstein's drop brow. <laughs> I have a dropped eyelid. I think it's from getting punched in the face too many times, but is there a way to, with Botox, bring that up? Yeah. So the idea oh, behind yeah, neuromodulators yeah. is it does the opposite of the movement of the muscle. So right now, this is what your muscle's doing. So when it's relaxed, it does this. So that's already opening, right? So then when you scrunch your eye, it's a sphincter muscle. So when it's contracted, it does this. So then when it's relaxed, it does this. So treating both of these air muscles are going to help open your eye. Now, some people see more of a dramatic result than others. And I would say it depends on where your lines are showing on your brow. So if you're squinting really hard and you can see lines that are almost like in your eyebrow, that means you're more of a candidate for a brow lift because you have an active muscle up here. Sometimes people will smile, all their lines are down here. You're not going to see as much of a lift because we can only lift the, with the muscle. We can't do anything like this. That's more like surgery or threads or something like that. So squint really hard. Yeah. Frown really hard. Yeah, yeah. You can't frown. I forgot. <laughs> just, just, um, so frown. Look at that. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you definitely would see results. Some people are unrealistic and they want to see surgical results with Botox and we cannot do that. But if you're wanting to just subtly lift the brows, like I have a picture of my before and after and I literally look kind of like Frankenstein <laughs> before. I literally look like Frankenstein before I get treatments because my brows sit so low and then after treatment, they just sit higher. Aesthetically, I don't think looking at me makes a like I look they different. Have to be but realistic, right? And that's kind of the thing. Like everyone's eyes are different. Like Frankenstein's like that. Like Kendra and I have very different eyes, so we're gonna see very different results. She probably would see a better result than me because I'm already more open, right? So some people have a bit of a hooded eye, some people are already open. So it really depends on the client. And that's why we will discuss with you what would be the best um, treatment for you and how to get you those results. All right. Well, I guess there's no more putting it off. We'll uh, take a, a real quick break here and get set up. And then I guess we get almost have a, a demonstration. Well, we'll see how it translates to an audio podcast. But worst case, go watch the video on YouTube and, and see the magic happen. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to talk about why we chose what product we chose. Um, so like I was saying before, we do use Botox and Dysport. Both are superior products. Dysport obviously came out first. So everybody or Botox, my bad obviously came out first. So everybody knows Botox, right? Dysport came out a few years later. The main difference is Dysport has more of a potent particle size per unit, meaning it can get to that nerve ending much quicker. So usually in about 24 hours, it's at the nerve ending, whereas Botox can take a lot longer. Because it is more of a potent particle size per unit, it kicks in quicker and it also can be a little bit more aggressive. So I find somebody who has young youthful um, muscles that like has that collagen and elastin to hold the product. Um, we like to use Dysport. If we were to um, have a client who's maybe older, has a little bit more of like tissue paper skin or has issues with um, really hooded lids and is older, we would probably do some Botox. So that's kind of why we chose Dysport for him. And everybody kind of likes to get results sooner. So it's just really popular in that sense. Um, so right now, Sam, just clean the face. So we clean the area with chlorhexidine. If you come in without makeup, that's ideal. 
well, if you do, we are going to ruin it. So just know that we have to clean the area. Once we clean it out, we map your muscles. So the glabella region is the 11. So when we frown really hard and we see those two lines, that's usually what people's main concerns are. So those are the corrugator muscles pulling in. On men, a lot of times the procerus muscle is taking over and that's the line that goes across here. So when we're treating the glabella region, I see Dustin checking himself. <laughs> you, you want a treatment. <laughs> so when, uh, <laughs> when we treat this area, what we're going to do is we're going to see results of it lifting and softening those lines. And then Sam also did the frontalis muscle, very, very common area. Frontalis muscle actually can drop the brows because it is a lifting muscle. So we like to treat higher that's why she kind of did the no fly zone area and men just take more units than females because their muscles are stronger and then crow's feet <laughs> you can see <laughs> with Ted One for the boys he actually when he smiles you can see that his lines go all the way into his brows meaning he is going to get a nice brow lift if you smile really big and you only see lines down here you won't see as much of a lift so Sam's going to do treatment now. All right. So it's going to just feel like little mosquito bites. So it's quite like comfortable. Eyes closed better? You, eyes open? Keep your eyes closed. Just because okay. I feel like then you don't see me coming. No. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you I when I'm... I'm going to tell you when I'm... Oh, yeah. That is... You're right. I, yeah. Um, these areas are quite comfortable. I'd say eyes are sometimes a little more sensitive. You can obviously bruise and bleed when it comes to treatments. I would say this area is the highest bruising area. Usually, we typically don't see a ton of bruising on top. But anytime you get a needle in the face, you can bruise. So I'll say I got a fight. That's right. Nice and tight. Uh, so here's Eastern just a little needle. poke. Yeah. yeah. So the treatment itself is very, How was that? very I did, honestly Nothing. did not even know you did that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So some of them are a little bit more pinchy than others. Like that one might have been a bit more pinchy. So I see Ted's kind of a little flush in the cheeks. Is there, can we, can we clean that up at all? So there's multiple things you can do. Um, I would say if you're looking for a quick fix, you can actually put Botox. So um, Botox, Dysport, putting it in different layers of the skin will do different things. So a lot of times if you're flush in the area, you can hyper dilute that. So right now all of our product is one to one. So you can hyper dilute it like even four or six to one and just kind of flood the area with little injectables. And that is going to kind of close up um, the glands. So then it's not as red short term, not going to be a forever thing, but it's something to do over the summer. Uh, we also have a redness solution product. A lot of people have rosacea and red cheeks. So using a product that has ingredients that will help with that is also really popular. And then lastly, laser, doing a laser facial where they can actually go in and the laser is actually really good at finding the pigmentation or the vascular area that needs to be treated. So He'll, he'll most likely see best results with um, laser, but all of those are good options. Yeah. How is that so far? Oh, it's fine. Yeah. And she's almost done. Oh. So it's a very, very quick treatment. A lot of people just get worked up because it's the unknown. And it's also, you don't see any results. You're spending however much money and you walk out and you see nothing but bug bites. <laughs> um, so it can throw people off a little bit. But once you, once you start to see the results in about five to seven oh, days... Within two weeks, he'll see full results and he'll be hooked. So will there be any, between the now and the seven days, is there any pain or? That's a good question. So I wouldn't say pain. Um, some people, it can induce a little bit of a headache. So if you are prone to headaches or migraines, these are two areas that we treat for the migraine treatment. So that's also what we do here is medical um, Botox. So these two areas obviously can induce a migraine. So when it's relaxing, sometimes it can cause a little bit of fogginess or a little bit of a headache the next day. Take a Tylenol. The main downtime is more bruising and swelling, but that's also very short lived, and I don't think you bruised him. Nope. So and that is the whole treatment. Yeah. Oh wow. So it'll be. You look like a new man. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks before it's fully kicked in, he's going to notice de decreased movement over the next um, like seven to nine days, but two weeks is full effect. So if he does still have movement that he's not happy with, he can come see us in two weeks and we will do a touch up and then get him the results he wants. And so seven days is probably the best time to get a new profile pickup on those apps or? 12. 12 days. Okay. You heard it. Yeah. You heard it here first. There you go. You're yeah. done. Um, all right. Well, that again, we just did, did the treatment. Uh, someone who's gotten his back waxed a whole bunch uh, like laser hair removal even like a massage that was the least painful kind of uh, i guess treat yourself type of treatment that i've had so yeah that's anyone who i guess is afraid of needles that was not bad at all june 25th update those pictures buddy <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Well, now that my treatment is uh, done, we're going to go offline here. Uh, the athlete is and Aaron are going to get some treatments as well. But, oh, actually, don't go anywhere. I got to grab something before I wrap up this interview. Oh, no. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. All right. Well, as a thank you for the support of our podcast and making us all look younger and, and more beautiful, we did notice there's a, a something missing out front in the lobby. So we wanted to give you... <laughs> no, this will probably be... We noticed there's some empty space in your garbage or recycling bin. Uh, so we do want to present you with this a limited edition. There's actually like 500 of these that we can't sell. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> a firefighter calendar. And uh, I, looked, awesome. I looked right... Right into, right into the center of Lund there. I shouldn't do that. But uh, uh, we don't blame you if you don't put that up. But uh, it, it's a we conversation piece nonetheless. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Uh, so again, uh, Kendra, Samantha, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we learned a, a lot today. A new experience for a lot of us too. For me, uh, getting getting the treatment and while we're doing the interview. So again, uh, Hebe Beauty Bar, uh, we already knew coming in there was, there was so much great word of mouth uh, about your business. And uh, now that we're here and we see it, yeah. Uh, definitely come in here and uh, check it out. And uh, yeah, thank you again to both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So a huge thank you again to Kendra and Samantha from Hebe Beauty Bar, our episode 39 sponsor uh, for what we can only assume was a great interview and a very unique experience for us. But uh, always a little weird recording an episode before an interview. Uh, kind of fun, though, to leave a little mystery surrounding this podcast. A uh, little bit of an outside the box partner for us to have, which is nice. Yeah, and they were so funny. I... Uh... <laughs> I I didn't think it was gonna be that exciting, but the way Kendra explained it and and Samantha was so gentle with those injections, so yeah. kudos to those two. And yeah, we'll be back for sure. I mean, I hope we're welcome back, but just uh, two two great professionals, and we would r recommend their services to everybody. So go check out Hebe Beauty Bar, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was blown away. Kev, what do you think? You think you're gonna be welcome back after the stunt you pulled yesterday? I <laughs> hey, she. she Tomorrow, seen, she's seen. Walsh can't follow the timelines either. Yeah, she seen she was okay with it, and and she said I wasn't the first one to do it either. I hope now you got to have to do something tomorrow. I ain't doing that's, that's, that's why I said today. it. Yeah. Oh boy. And now I I'm just confused. painted you into a corner. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my pants. You won't her. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already did do it, man. <laughs> And I know hopefully, again, we haven't done this yet. I think uh, co-worker Aaron and Dustin's finally going to make a return to this podcast one way or another. He said he's coming. He said no needles to his face. I th you think he's a little scared, but we'll see. We'll see what we can make him do or what we did make him do. I don't know how what tents we're in anymore. Yeah, that guy doesn't sweat properly anyway, so I don't know if Botox is going to... Well, for his armpits, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's got a few wrinkles. That yeah, he's probably pretty tired up. looking. Yeah. yeah. A couple bags under the eyes. Yeah. Pretty, pretty thin lips too. Yeah. Lots of work to be yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think you should get, I think you should get lip filler. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Go. We I still have no idea how that's going to go. So uh, go watch it. And on that note, uh, time to talk about everything and nothing all at the same time as we head in to shooting the breeze. Bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> that was very very happy oh uh, yeah it's a good day <laughs> <laughs> any day I lots get to of breeze today any day i get to shoot the breeze with you guys is a okay. good day yeah. did you do you practice practice what your sound effects uh yeah like in the shower or in yeah. the bathroom yeah that's what that is yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just lunch shooting the breeze in the, yeah. <laughs> in the bathroom yeah so oh. if you guys want to yeah i can give you tips just come over to come over to my bathroom and i'll show you show you what to do you put a lock on the door. Wow. Well, you got to be invited in first. Uh, I'm in. All right, Kevin, please interrupt this. <laughs> okay. Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Red Stag Barbershop, an authentic experience with a modern twist. Your locally owned grooming spot with locations in Capstone or Gasoline Alley and coming soon to Lacombe. It's where friends gather for top-notch haircuts and traditional hot shaves, all while enjoying a cold craft beer or cocktail. <laughs> that was very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> timing <laughs> with their easy online booking they make sure your time with them is not just about looking great but feeling at home red stag barbershop where every visit feels like catching up with old friends you're almost an expert now wow. at this yeah pretty much <laughs> on the last that's part it, on time, the last dude. part it says red sag and i almost ron <laughs> burgundy'd it <laughs> that's yeah that's my fault yeah. <laughs> 
London, I think that's a reverse fly. I was wondering what you were doing with the yeah. beer can, and then I realized that is expert that's just, time. That's, that's, that's thinking. That's more sound effects. <laughs> Uh, first thing to talk about again is we have our uh, third installment of Barbershop Talk out now. Another great time at Red Stag Barbershop with, a, I've said it in there, one of my favorite people, a 15-year pro hockey player, Pete Vandermeer, a very prominent person and family here in central Alberta and maybe one of the kings of hockey stories too. And it's always those minor league guys, right? That tend to have the best stories. Well, they've, they've usually seen the, the coolest shit. They've played with uh, some of the best players. They've seen some of the worst uh, aspects of uh, professional hockey. They've played in a lot of small barns, small, small towns, small cities, and they've, they've just known so many guys. So they, they're not the, the millionaires that are flying first class. They're on a bus somewhere a lot of the time. They're uh, similar to a blue collar worker, I'd say, for the most part. Well, and Pete, he was just listing off teams that he played for and he was around for so long. And when you play for that many years and that many teams, you get to meet so many people and different yeah. players that you play with or against. And I feel like that just leads to all these different stories that he had. And he's still playing. Yeah. That's crazy. And he'd like for the, the type of player he was, he can still form full sentences and everything too. <laughs> like they're very impressed. But he is and he's just such a genuinely nice guy too. He has time for everybody. He's been listening to the podcast since day one too. So so he was very excited to come on. And uh, yeah, here's just a clip of our uh, barbershop talk with Pete Vandermeer. So were you, I can imagine uh, for home teams, you're probably a bit of a, a fan favorite, but were you were you a big target in, in visiting rinks a lot? Like, do you have maybe one, like just the most hostile away environment you've ever been a part of? Yeah, I got a good one just popped into my head there. Um, like the fans in the Southeastern states, right? They knew nothing about hockey, right? They <laughs> loved the, the boards crashing and they loved goals and they loved the fights, right? And they really didn't know what was going on. They have to announce, you know, whatever, why the whistle was all the time, right? And they still do like in Carolina and stuff to do that as well. I heard they did that in Vegas. When, yeah, uh, the Knights first came. year. Yeah, first year yep. too. Absolutely, because they, they don't know and fine, fair enough. But uh, I was playing in the East Coast League and uh, – it was, it was, it was Aaron Downey and, and Sean Thornton who are pretty much the same person, right? And I, I, pl <laughs> I, I played with Downs and Prov, and just one of the best human beings ever, great teammate. But him and Sean Thornton are, are the same type of guy. And it, it was Thorny. It was, I was playing in Richmond or playing in Hampton Roads, like a Norfolk, Virginia. It's, you know, a close geographical rival a couple hours down the road. And they love the fights there, right? Anyways, I fought all the time. Their crowd hated me. Our crowd hated their guys, hated Sean. And we got in a fight down in, in North folk and we were rolling around in a ball and, and the ref actually stepped on Sean's hand cool. and cut his hand and he gets up and he's yelling he was a, a master at playing the refs doing he bit me he bit me right <laughs> like oh my God. thorny you asshole you know I didn't bite you and the ref like the refs are on the same circuit as us we're with them all. like I didn't bite him like yeah. Liney stepped on him like yeah no problem but this goes to the media and the fans right we come back down there two weeks later there's 5,000 signs bite me Vandermeer oh, and everybody wow. screaming bite me Vandermeer. I've got three of them in my I got a little <laughs> folder just kept them with some blood sprinkled on them. Oh, it's funny stuff. It almost seems like the the tough guys, the enforcers in the NHL almost like off the ice are almost inherently the, the nicest guys, right? And like, is there like a little, like a tough guys guild, like just that unspoken bond too? Obviously there's some guys you probably just hate to play against, but it, it does seem like in knowing you and meeting some other guys who were the enforcers, like you're all just like the nicest people I've ever met. Well, cause we get to vent all of our evil out. That's why it's, <laughs> there's none left. We don't have anything to sit and stew on, but guys that do that job for any length of time, whether it's in junior and especially pro, like it's over years and years and years, you don't do that stuff for your own well-being like yeah everybody's got an ego and likes people thinking what they do is cool but you don't lay your body on the line over and over for everybody else if you're an asshole you have to have some paternal instincts and want to look after people and you know that's got to be part of your makeup otherwise you don't do it guys can do it for a year or two but in order to do it for any length of time you have to you have to have something good in your heart but you usually guys you have you fight with for any length of time that's the guy you go and sit and have a beer with that guy on the other team because he's the only one that really knows what the hell you're going through every day and you, you can bullshit about what's going on in your day and how you match up against this guy or that guy but but mostly it's just about life so most most of the tough guys i know are pretty good guys but not including myself in that i'm kind of a dick but most guys are <laughs> they're they're great guys to be around and, and they're always willing to buy a beer and share a story so guys are like hanging out with 
So again, just like everything else, you want to watch the, the full barbershop talk, which I highly recommend, especially if you like hockey stories. Uh, you can go to our YouTube page to see that. And yeah, no one, again, planned yet for the next barbershop talk, but we've been on a good run. And uh, yeah, well, it's just too bad you couldn't be there because I, I don't think you really know Pete I don't. too well. I know no. Dustin does, but... Yep, but obviously, you know, the Vandermeer family growing up and they're kind of like the Sutters in the hockey world mm-hmm. where they're just, you know, all the boys played hockey and, and they were all really good um, and tough. Like, you know, the typical tough farm boy. Uh, I think that was them to a T. So, oh, yeah. Um, still is. <laughs> yeah, and it's really cool that a lot of them are still, you know, around central Alberta and owning businesses and doing their thing. So. Yeah, I think they're all still in central Alberta except for Jim who I believe is in Vancouver. So still very local. You see see all the Vandermeers, uh, like Pete said in the interview that he doesn't say no to a golf tournament. <laughs> so that's that's a great life too. But yeah, I highly recommend uh, going to watch that one. And as always too, if you have a suggestion for a, a barbershop talk, let us know. And uh, Pete's a, a top O'Deer fan. He posted on Facebook today that he was. So Oh yeah, I oh, did wow. see that. So if, uh, if you like Pete, you should maybe uh, like or subscribe to Oh Dear. Yeah. I mean, they're already listening. Well, I'm talking to our Rogers oh, TV Rogers TV people. Oh, yeah. Do you think Pete knows that he posted that top fan thing? Because that's not a brag. Yeah. Yeah. He probably already forgot. Yeah, he probably had to lost a bet and had to <laughs> post that he's a top Oh Dear fan. <laughs> good, good on him though. Yeah. Cheers, Pete. Well, so right now when we're recording this, uh, sorry to bring it up, London Walsh, the Edmonton Oilers, which honestly I think is kind of cool that they're in the Stanley Cup final. Uh, it's good for hockey in Canada. It's good for Alberta, but they're down two games to none. One thing I want to debate while we're just shooting the breeze because I've had this uh, chat many times. I see a lot of Flames fans that they, I mean, they're just looking for attention at this point. They're post on there like, oh, look, I'm about to buy a Florida Panther jersey and whatever. But the debate is, are if you're a Flames fan or even a Canucks fan or Leafs fan, whatever, are you a traitor for cheering <laughs> for the Oilers, right? Or are you just, again, like being happy for your friends who are Oilers fans? Because that's kind of where I'm at. For you guys, I'm happy to see you have the fun. Like, I couldn't care less if they win, great. And if they don't, great. I love hockey, but not enough to let it ever ruin my day. But there are some hardcore fans out there that are just like making a spectacle out of not cheering for the Oilers. Go ahead and do it, but I don't think it's necessary. I think there's a wide spectrum of fans out there, like you say, where some like you, where you can just be like, yeah, this is cool or whatever, or some that will jump on the bandwagon and cheer. I remember, so going back to high school, I remember in 2004, the Flames were in the final. So I've always been an Oilers fan, but I remember back then cruising around town, listening to it on the radio with my buddies and like thinking, hey, I I want the Flames to do good because at the time it was uh 17th Ave or whatever yeah the like red it was mile, yeah, yeah the red mile it was it was a gong show and then 2006 with the Oilers going there after the lockout again it was like Jasper Ave White Ave it was nuts so I was a huge fan then too but for me I if the Leafs were in the final I would screw I hate them mm. and I only I only hate the Leafs because of how much attention they get in the media <laughs> yeah a lot of friends are surprisingly Leafs fans and I guess maybe I would be happy for yeah. them. I you don't, don't have to cheer for them. You yeah. also don't have to cheer against them. But the athlete, you're a big Flames fan. What do you think? Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit on the opposite side of the spectrum mm-hmm. as you. Uh, I'm like cheering very hard against the Oilers. Like it does ruin my day when they win mm-hmm. a game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And even like as a Flames fan, I'm not too fond of the Panthers either, but it was kind of just like, okay, this is the lesser of two evils. And so I'm just going to bite the bullet and and cheer for him. I was cheering cheering really hard for Dallas, but uh, Edmonton looked really good in that series, actually. So Florida's up two nothing, and I'm just praying that they hold on. And I'm sorry if that hurts either of your feelings. That's fine. Yeah, we can take it. Like I'm kind of, I'm proud of Edmonton and, and Alberta and like the fans because it's becoming a huge story. I think across the hockey world, just about how passionate the fans are and how much energy is in the building and the city. And you got you, Shania Twain. Yeah. yeah like it's going to be really exciting. These next couple of home games, regardless. I think it's just really cool to see the passion and kind of everyone just come together and unite under this kind of run. That's not looking so great, but game seven, baby. <laughs> I would add like, even though I'm, cheering against Edmonton. I, it is really cool being so close to it and like just watching the atmosphere like even in town in Red Deer here but just on TV you see like it's always exciting when there's a Canadian team in the finals or one that goes on a deep run because they always have the outdoor watch parties and it's just cool to see and the fans are always going crazy so it is kind of cool from that perspective but I still want them to lose. Yeah so where I kind of fall on the whole issue about cheering for or against a team that's not your team I think it's fine to cheer for that team, but don't pretend, don't be like a hardcore bandwagon jumper. Don't pretend like you were, you were in the shit when they were, they had a record of two, 10 and whatever this year. Just to, 
to start the to start the year, and now now you're cheering just as hard when they win. Like you don't you can't you no. can't be that happy. You don't know what it. I've been you through. Deser- <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I agree with that. You, too, you yeah. don't deserve to be as happy as me. <laughs> <laughs> who went through that? Who went through that crap Are at the you beginning a of the year? Fan until like four years ago. Uh, that was like eight or ten years ago. <laughs> it's been a while, but it's it been, used yeah. to be. Uh, yeah, Oilers fans time. have been through a lot. Like yeah. I said, yeah. do I hate that they're in the Cup final? Like as a Flames fan, because we, we'll never hear the end of it, whether they they win or lose. But again, it's better than like watching well, a Vegas and Florida Cup final, right? Where do you know a Vegas or act, like actual Florida fan? No, at least you guys are having fun, and for us, it's just jealousy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I agree with that. But the the other thing is too, yeah. When you're out at when you're out at uh, the pub or a watch party and the Oilers score, everyone's pumped. You're meeting new people. You're me- making new friends. Hey, grows the economy. Um, and this so, is Our Lady Peace for Game Three and Shania Twain for Game Four. Like, yeah, that's pretty huge. I mean, it's just nice to have some meaningful hockey played in in June, where you have a team in a non COVID year. In a yeah. non COVID <laughs> year, your team or team from your province is has a chance to win it all because this rarely, rarely happens, especially mm. <laughs> for the last 30 years. So, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's going to go. I hope it goes seven and... We well, hope, better hope it goes at least six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, I mean, I can't see Edmonton win four straight. So, I think it's going That's seven. That's not what I was hinting at, but yeah. I, no, <laughs> Edmonton is going to win the next two at home and then game five might be yeah. up in the... <laughs> Yeah, we hey, we'll we'll get to I think, back at the tape. I think the home team's going to win every game except game seven. <laughs> Oilers are winning game seven in Florida. That's a promise. <laughs> Clip it. No, all right. This- Riley, quit watching porn. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> well, that's not making it on TV. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, that, hey, the good. We haven't had a, a good debate like that in a while. But uh, let's talk a little bit about, of course, our Red Deer. Red. Oh, I can never say it right. Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce, a partnership that we have going on. Our latest business spotlight uh, with ZS Holdings. Uh, that's Shazma and Jamil Sharania is out on YouTube. Uh, make sure you go and uh, watch it because it's a very good one. Again, great work by Riley and Fish as always. But uh, yeah, coming up to uh, uh, next one is with Janessa Marsh who is the owner operator of the forum which is a very unique uh, interesting business uh, here in Red Deer and uh, something that we actually learned a lot about so make sure you stay tuned for that one coming up uh, right around the end of June. Uh, staying with the Chamber, Episode 3 of Lund Employed, now available to watch on YouTube, with Lund taking a dive into the culinary world, uh, both as a cook and a server at Pampa Brazilian Steakhouse. So uh, definitely a new experience for you. Uh, yeah, I've only eaten at a Brazilian Steakhouse, I think, twice before, and one of them was Pampa. Really, really cool to see it from, from the back of house perspective. Um, I've got a lot more respect for the cooks and the servers than I had than I previously did going into it. It's not as easy as they make it look. So. No, you did a good job handling your meat though. We didn't stab your hand. I didn't hurt it, injure anybody and they didn't have to throw out any products. Yeah. So that would that's a pretty big win. So I don't want to give a spoiler or not, but I th- think I did a pretty good job and you may or you may not see me in the future working at Papa. But stay tuned for episode four. One <laughs> 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 uh, but thank you to Ricardo for Lund, uh, for doing the Lund Employed. That's actually someone, the first two is people you knew pretty well, Lundy. Ricardo kind of reached out to us just through the chamber. We'd never met him before. So it was kind of a fun dynamic because he is a bit of a quieter guy too, doesn't really know you. I know he had a blast. And you, I, I, I have to say out of all three, like you really took an interest. And this one is almost, it's the most heartwarming episode so far because you actually like really, I think if you re- really wanted to, to give that career a go, you could do it. Yeah, it's something I've never, I mean, besides barbecuing at home and cooking at home, I have zero experience in that uh, that field of work. So, uh, I was genuinely in- interested about what he had to say. So, not that I wasn't interested when Kevin was telling me stuff, but... <laughs> I mean, I kind of zoned out yeah. for a bit. Food's a little more interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. than numbers. I yeah. was going to give you some constructive uh, feedback and say, like, if only you would have brought that passion. Yeah, to I MMP. know. I did. I, I was lacking passion that day. Yeah. Pick a more exciting career. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, math's pretty fun, though. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, like I said, spoiler alert, stay tuned for episode four, uh, which has already been recorded at Red Heart Brewery. Uh, we're not going to give much away, but Lundy, you had a good time at that one. And uh, hey, stay tuned for episode five. Maybe. Maybe. No, oh, definitely. Um, and yeah, if you're uh, if you're in the market for a new employee uh, who may or may not have experience, but has a willingness to learn and a great attitude, just check out uh, check out Indeed.com. I'm sure you'll find someone there. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but but seriously, I'm looking. Um, either for either for a real job or just for for a day, one day. I will tell you, in some ways, I'm jealous of you because you are doing some pretty cool stuff. But then also, like that, I would not like for four or five hours. Like it, there's some high pressure situations too, learning some new stuff. So I said it before, but like good for you for doing this. It's, I mean, at every one of these jobs, there was stuff I could have really, really screwed up yeah. and caused some damage. And I may that may or may not have happened in one of the last two episodes, but I don't want to ruin anything. So it is high, a high pressure situation. Oh, damage to a couple full cans of beer. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey oh. <laughs> Oh, and the, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, to uh, Old Beer, the only beer you'll ever need. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> okay, I, I was going to say shout out to Red Heart because again, uh, having a lot of compliments again on the, the Old Beer cans that they did uh, with their their blonde blonde ale. Uh, but some good news, again, we're, we're still kind of, this still kind of in the works, but we said uh, they gave us a bunch of uh, uh, our own custom label beer uh, for us to have, not for sale, but... I think coming uh, sometime in the summer, again, this may be, uh, O-Beer will be for sale. Uh, so keep an eye on our social media as well because we're going to post a thing if you want to pre-order a couple of flats and uh, hopefully something you'll see in a couple of uh, bars and restaurants as well coming up in the next few months. So again, thank you to Red Heart for that, for having us uh, for Lund Employed. And again, it's just, you know, we got to hang out there after too. It's such a it's such a cool tap room. I know we talked about it last time, but uh, make, make the little trip just outside of the the city and uh, yeah it's it's a great place to hang out yeah they have one of the coolest uh, coolest tap rooms in in central alberta so um and they have they've got great beer and uh, the owners are, are great guys so um check it out if you haven't and you won't be disappointed all right so lengthy shooting the breeze but uh sometimes you have to shoot a lot of breeze uh, before we move on to deer call I do want to uh talk a little bit about things that are going on coming up in central Alberta because there's quite a few exciting things. Uh, so we haven't done this specific segment in a while, but let's get in to what's happening. What's happening with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good sure. news for you. I don't think you'll ever have to do that again. <laughs> yeah. That was 80 sitcom vibes <laughs> yeah, right <I> there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was happening with that <laughs> is the real question. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going with yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, you, you just felt you, it? Yeah. Got somewhere. Yeah. What's Happening is brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates at Remax Real Estate, the trusted experts for all things real estate in central Alberta. Skip the sales pitch and get real advice from real people who offer real results. Visit their website at andrewrussell.ca. They're real. Real people. Real results. Real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! That's what's happening. That's that, a- that one's free, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're going to charge him double, <laughs> even though he's not here. Uh, the one cool thing, I think, uh, again, with Bose being our presenting sponsor that we want to mention, uh, kind of branching out, we know that Bose does a, a lot of great catering. We're going to talk about that in a second. But uh, Bose Sandwich Club, uh, we actually, I don't know when this is opening. So by the time this comes out, could be open, could be soon. But uh, they're opening up uh, yeah, a sandwich shop and a bit of a, a catering business in Capstone, which has a, a whole bunch bunch of new businesses popping up there actually but uh, just wanted to give them a shout out uh, you've probably uh, seen it already and if not yeah as soon as they're open go check it out because you know that food is going to be real good what uh what's the deal with the sandwich club what do you what do you get for being a club member What's the hook? I mean, my guess would be sandwiches is what you get. Is it uh, like pay money and get unlimited sandwiches, buy one, get one free? What do I fucking work there? I don't know. (laughs) Hey, man, what's happening? (laughs) Uh, no, I, I again, I don't. There's a little bit of mystery surrounding mm-hmm. it still too, which I think is is kind of cool. But we know everything Bose touches kind of turns to gold. So uh, again, pretty cool. Just another new business, and uh, to see them branch out and and uh, do that is pretty cool. So yeah, keep your eyes open for Bose Sandwich Club. And uh, still speaking of Bose, uh, really cool show coming to Red Deer that we want to plug. It's actually at the the Red Deer Resort and Casino, their new uh, I guess event center. This is going to be the first show there. Uh, Bose is actually involved in this in a big way, but uh, July 13th, Walk Off the Earth, playing an all ages show too, which is uh, means oh, you can bring your kids. And there is like an 18 plus area if you don't want to be around kids. But, uh, you know, obviously a band that went viral for the cover, the unique covers they did. Their original music is is also really good. But yeah, they're really talented. And, and you know, it's going to be a great show because they do such kind of off the wall things with their instruments and stuff. So again, uh, Red Deer Resort and Casino.ca, get your tickets 
tickets for that one. Uh, again, it's uh, so big for Red Deer, I think, for this concert and for this new event center to be a success. So uh, don't miss out because I, I can't imagine that it's not going to be sold out. Okay, Tad, what's the date? Uh, July 13th. Okay. I think I said it. Okay. No, I just reiterated yeah, July is, 13th. No, yeah. yeah. And just Bo's doing more cool shit, honestly, being involved with, with that. And uh, yeah, and any great concerts like this we can get in Red Deer is uh, is pretty cool. And one more really cool thing that's happening uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, the athlete also knows uh, how cool this is. But uh, for the first time, uh, the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame induction gala is going to be held in Red Deer. I think it's been in Canmore for at least the last 10 years. But it's uh, July 20th, also a Saturday. It's going to be at the Gary W. Harris Canada Game Center. And uh, well, at least in all my time being at hockey, Alberta and probably uh, you as well, Kevin. Uh, it's been some great induction classes, but uh, this one includes Jerome Ginla, Craig McTavish, uh, Shannon Zabados, uh, and the 2001 Memorial Cup winning Rebels team. Uh, so that had Colby Armstrong on there, Jim Vandermeer, Martin Erat, Cam Ward. Hopefully, at least a couple of those guys can be in town for that. But again, if you like hockey stories, if you're a big hockey fan, that is one you absolutely uh, want to get tickets to and take in uh, sponsorship opportunities for them as well. Uh, just go to hockeyalberta.ca for that. But uh, again, I know uh, Oilers fans here, Flames fans here, a uh, pretty cool class. Yeah. That's- that's, uh, that sounds that sounds awesome for anyone that, that's grown up in Red Deer that's close to our age. I mean, obviously that uh, 2001 Rebels. I mean, that was such a cool run. Everyone remembers where they were when they won the cup, the Memorial Cup, and yeah, I, like everyone like remembers those names. Obviously, Colby Armstrong and a few others. You still you still see them out there uh, doing the broadcasting and mm-hmm. on spitting chicklets. And uh, I mean, Joe McGinley is a, a fan favorite, even if you weren't a Flames fan. Mm-hmm. So uh, it'll be a really cool event, and, and hopefully, we'll see see most those people there. Well, I think it's cool with with Shannon Zabados, especially because she was just broke barriers too as a female in one of I think the I think the first female goaltender, or one of the first to play in the AJHL. But we have a couple friends who played with her. So again, uh, like pretty close to local here in Red Deer, right? But uh, being kind of from the Edmonton area. But yeah, that's uh that's a, a cool one as well. And yeah, it's it's always a great time. Uh, Kevin and I have been lucky enough to go to a bunch of those galas. So to have it here in Red Deer, like don't don't miss this opportunity because it's uh, it's pretty rare. All right, now we are going to move on to Deer Call. You dead? Yeah, yeah, I think he's <laughs> dying. That's a dying. Yeah, that's, that that's a, a deer calling for help. That's a deer who's lived a good life. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's ready. He's he's ready to go. <laughs> All right, well, go ahead. <laughs> Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause with $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Chalant... Chalant... <laughs> oh, see? Experts. <laughs> 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 if you had a just striped suit on, you are a fucking 1927 gangster. Hi, <laughs> much for supposing. <laughs> I was just trying to give it some pizzazz. <laughs> oh, I like it. I, yeah, it's good. Keep it up. <laughs> Fuck, you started good, though. Yeah, you were I real nailed, good at the start. Nailed the start. The pressure just gets too high. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. It's this just what we put Aaron through. Yeah. It just yeah. works. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation, and fun. It's just that simple. All right, lucky for you, though, these ad reads don't make it on TV, so no, no one knows how much you just biffed that one. Yeah. <laughs> we know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we know. We and, well, I guess everyone yeah. knows. They just can't witness yeah. it. But, well, uh, I, I just tweeted it out, too, so, I, so all my 75 followers know, too. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, and because summer is finally officially here, hopefully by the time this comes out, we're getting some decent weather, but uh, we asked you to tell us what your favorite summer movie is, whether it's actually about the summertime or just gives off those summer vibes. Uh, either way, uh, we wanted to hear it. And uh, a couple people, two people... Uh, winning $25 gift card to cilantro and chive as we do every single month. So again, uh, next time we put a deer call out, that's your chance to win. All right. So right off the hop, I think we're, we're going to reveal my favorite. But uh, one of our winners, Eric, uh, but also Christina, who didn't win, but had a great answer, said Dazed and Confused, which is, like I think, the ultimate coming of age summertime movie. I uh, I like I like the movie. I 
to me, it's nothing special. What? It's it's there's just not enough there for me. It is a good coming of age story, but it's not overly funny. It's not overly dramatic. I think it's two seventies or two eighties whenever it was. Oh, see, that's why I like, and the the characters in it are so good. Guys like me and Kev here are too young to to really appreciate it. I think. Like, have you have you even seen that movie? Kevin? I haven't. I have not. Be a lot cooler if I did, though. <laughs> oh, okay. He knows that uh, line, and that is in Matthew McConaughey's first role, right? So, and Ben Affleck is in there. Uh, Cole Hauser, who finally became famous because of Yellowstone. But did you guys hear Ben and, and J Lo might be getting divorced? I can't. Talk I'm about shocked. That right now. I mean, yeah. Why would you bring that up? I just, I was just getting over it. <laughs> Just so want to make sure everyone knew. Anyways, highly recommend. I think you need to see that movie at least once. Uh, highly disagree with you, Lund. But uh, uh, Cheryl, our other winner, uh, said Top Gun, which uh, definitely th- has the summer vibes, right? Especially the volleyball scene in the in the original one. Hey, that's one of the few movies where... Are we talking about Top Gun or Top Gun Maverick? Well, probably either. I think this was the original Top Gun, but they both yeah. have summer I mean, vibes. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the few times where the sequel has been like 20 years later and has been as good or better than the original. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a good summer movie. Top Gun, I watched a number of times. I would never consider it like a summer movie. Though. Oh, it's summer vibes. Oh, come on, with man. The, the volleyball, the the volleyball scene? I guess. It's a movie I think people watch in the summertime. Okay. Like it's kind of more. But I like I agree. It's not a summer movie. It's That's, again, like I said, the, the summertime vibes. Hey, this is this is funny because he uh, doesn't normally comment on our, our Facebook post, but Mayor Ken huh. said, uh, and I agree with this one. It's up there. Greece. That is a oh, summertime, yeah. summer loving. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that that is a summer movie. Yeah, yeah. He probably yeah. taught some of those kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no, nothing but love, Mayor Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've yeah. Seen, have you seen Greece? Uh, I have not seen Greece from start to finish. Okay, but you know the songs. your landlord has some work to do. Yeah, yeah. I've seen Top Gun though, and <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed it, and it gave me summer vibes. Yeah. Gre- <laughs> Greece actually like is such a good movie, I and mean, it's still it. I mean, in some ways, it doesn't hold up, obviously, but it, it's still enjoyable and great music. I love a good musical movie. So, is it called Greece because of the they're greasers? Yeah, but why are they are they called greasers because all the hair product yeah. in their hair? <laughs> Didn't you ever read no. Outsiders? No. Oh. What? No. Oh, stay golden, pony boy. I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. I'll show you the movie. I, I Well, the okay. book is good, but it's not really a book for a 30-year-old sure man if- to read. <laughs> I- yeah, I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the, the athlete's list of movies to watch yeah. this summer. You're going to have a great summer. Oh, my yeah. Goodness. I, I would agree. I never thought of Greece as a summer movie, but it kind of starts off where they're reminiscing about summer yes. and then it goes to the yeah. school year and then the end is like the iconic song as well. Yeah. Summer Lovin'. Well, the Summer Lovin's at the start, I think. Yeah. You'd know that if you watched it. But yeah, yeah, but it's about summer. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing is based on a summer romance. But anyway, summer speaking of- Summer <laughs> happened so fast. <laughs> that, was, that was not the first line but you, that is a correct line so we'll, we'll give it to you uh one that randy said i actually i've only seen like the the live musical and i won't watch the movie for that reason but uh, she said mama mia which is another i'm gonna assume strive no chance not seen no that one. no mama mia here we go again mama mia <laughs> Na, 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 na. Okay. Cl- I, no. I, 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 I've never, I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> Maybe you've heard the song. I, well, yeah, it's by ABBA, right? Yeah, the, well, the whole movie is ABBA based on ABBA. Okay. There's okay. really, really good musical. I, I heard the, the movies kind of blah, so I've never watched it. Uh, here's what, this is kind of funny. Two different Casey's, one with a C and one with a, a K, both said now and then. And that's the one, like the flashback one with, uh, like Christina Ricci is in it, and then Rosie O'Donnell plays like the older version of her, I think. But it's like, uh, it's a, another coming of age. I saw it when I was a kid and it, it opened me up to a lot of like that 60s music, like the monkeys uh, and all of that. Uh, have I, you I seen know, it? I know, I know what you're talking yeah. about, but no, I haven't watched. I'm not a big... Uh Rosie O'Donnell fan. Well, she's not in that much. Well, I'm not a big Christina Ricci fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just... What about I'm... Devin Sawa? He's in there. <laughs> I have no idea who it is, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know who he is. He's a hunk. Yeah. And then and so. Strybosh, I assume another one. I don't even this. know what you just said. <laughs> now and oh. then? And you know what? It's an, it's an excellent soundtrack, too. I'll tell you that much. Uh, so, Chrissy said another one Strybosh for sure hasn't seen. And maybe one of the most devastating fucking endings to a movie of all time, My Girl. Oh, Oh, yeah. Uh, or Thomas J. Spoiler alert. Oh, my alert. God. But he can't see without his glasses. Oh, what a heartbreak, that is. Dude. That is one of the saddest movies I've ever seen. Was it? Is it Bees? 
Yeah. Is that yeah. how it... Yeah. I feel like I watched that when like 10 years old maybe and it crushed me so yeah. much yeah. that I've never watched it I again. couldn't watch it again, but I, honestly. Yeah, yeah, you see the ending. Trybox, you have to watch like, it. Uh, Just don't watch the ending, man. Sounds sad. I'm going to have such a great yeah. summer watching all these fun movies. <laughs> he lives. Yeah. Don't is, worry. Uh, is it Macaulay Culkin that's the yeah. kid? Yeah. Yeah. And it had Dan Aykroyd's in it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty, it is a good movie, but it, it, it's like, it is like almost a rite of passage movie to watch growing up, but it is real sad. Yeah. Um, Sarah said Grown Ups or Grown Ups 2, which are two terrible movies, but I have to admit really do give off like the grown up friendship summer vibes, which I've, I've watched both those movies more than I'd care to say. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I have nothing to say about those movies because they're terrible movies, but they're, <laughs> they take place in the summer. <laughs> so <laughs> Fits the bill. Yeah. Good job, Sarah. I know you had to have seen those. Uh, I think I've seen the first one. Well, then you've seen the second one because it was equally as bad. What do you like? What do you do? Read and exercise? Oh, definitely don't read. Oh my no. god! You've seen me read these ads. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, oh, Vicky and another a third Casey said the Great Outdoors, which is a very underrated John Candy movie. And actually, I also think Dan Aykroyd's yeah, in that in one yeah. too, right? And I know Strybosch hasn't seen that one, but add it to the list because that's just a fun movie. If you're a John Candy fan, you'll like that movie. It's like a typical John Candy. So, it's yeah. like a mid 80s film taking, probably? The, yeah. Maybe early 90s. Okay. Yeah, that time period. They, mm. They're trying to take their, their young families out to what? It's a, just a vacation. A, a but it's like vacation. rich guy versus not rich guy right. type of yeah. thing. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a good, it is a good summer movie. Yeah. They find a dead body at a restaurant and then they kids play with the dead body. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I forgot about that yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, thanks for highlighting that. Uh, Kelsey said the parent trap. Technology was at its peak then, having Lindsay Lohan play, I was play con- both roles. I was convinced she had a sister yeah. for like five or ten years after that that movie. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Have you? So, you've maybe seen two of these movies so far. Uh, Tracy said one I know Strybosch hasn't seen, which is a crime. Uh, kind of. I, I guess it's a summer movie still. Stand By Me. Yeah. Which is, again, like a, just a necessary coming of age movie to Another watch. Another dead body in that one, too. That is actually, though, the whole movie is based on a dead body, basically. A lot of people dying in the what summer. What would you do if you found a dead body, Strybosch? As a child, as a, make ten- a, movie. As a 10-year-old. Yeah, I would make a summer movie about it. <laughs> Uh, and then you no, as, a, as a 10 year old child yeah you're in the forest and you find a dead body what would you do what Pro- probably run away but they were looking for it in the movie like they set out to go find it but why well, i can't remember why what was it because they would just to find it and be in be the, the hero be the heroes it, something to like that bring yeah it back. yeah well yeah another one like like young jerry o'connell will wheaton oh. is is in it river phoenix which i don't know if you know that he oh, passed yeah. away r.i.p yeah but uh and also and Kiefer sutherland's in it like that's another great movie kevin you're gonna have such a good summer like you're gonna enjoy all these i promise uh jillian said one that became a cult classic like way way later but a uh, wet hot american summer I guess now you can call it a classic summer movie. That's another one like with a sneaky cast in it. They got a lot of people in that cast that got famous after the after the fact. Mm-hmm. So it's cool to look back. And they did they did like a series what like five years ago about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they did like a and they did first day of camp. I can't remember what was a series and what was just a movie. But they did like first day of camp that took place before the movie. And then the end of camp, basically. So there's two different spin-offs from that one. Yes. Oh, you have seen. Yeah, that I one. have okay. seen that one. Oh, wow. Uh, what about uh, Erica said si- sisterhood of the traveling pants? Oh, you knew that. Okay, you used to call it the sisterhood of the yeah or yeah the traveling yeah, pants yeah, of the, yeah yeah sisterhood. <laughs> is that two different movies? Yeah, it's two different movies. Oh. Yeah, uh, that one also haven't seen, but no no no. no. Yeah, no, I don't think I've seen it. Uh, Brenda said a classic like the original National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah, so that was the one where they they went to Wally World. All I remember from that, hey, hey someone else died in a movie, but when they put the is it the grandma? Pat passes away mm-hmm. and they put her on the roof of the car. That's the <laughs> only, I think that's the only thing I can remember from that movie. Anything National Lampoon says is is pretty good. Well, no, I wouldn't say everything, but <laughs> but there's there's some good ones. Uh, Tyler, I have never thought of this as a summer movie, but I guess it could be. Tyler said FUBAR. So, of course, with some the Alberta spin to that yeah. one. I mean, I guess a lot of it takes, the first one takes place in the summertime. Probably yeah. something you do watch in the summer. But. True. Yeah, and Tron yeah. does funk and blow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm when um, like, iconic when he's outside in that big thunderstorm and he's yeah. just hammered. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I actually, I met that's him a on a July day. In I met Alberta. Tron on a sea yeah. train in Calgary once, like coming <laughs> home from the bar. It was, it was so nice. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Um, okay, now we're getting into the ones that I think we can all agree on. Uh, Danielle, Lisa, and Amanda all said The Sandlot. Yeah, for sure. Which is like, that's an iconic childhood movie. Yeah. Kevin, if if you're, we're sending you to the couch if you haven't seen The Sandlot. I have seen The Sandlot. That's like, I, and like, it gets better every time I watch it. I don't watch it a lot anymore, but every time you see it on TV or whatever, like it, it doesn't lose its effect as you become an adult. It's such a simple premise too. Like some young kids playing a baseball game, hit a ball over the fence and you're just terrified of the dog or the neighbor and then it turns out oh, it's not that bad <laughs> that big of a deal <laughs> that it's a timeless movie. yeah like they could remake that movie today and it'd be just as successful there, there is like a sandlot two maybe oh, no. three yeah. i've never watched no. it i love the sandlot <laughs> yeah um i've showed my kids at first they were too young and they had nightmares about the dog <laughs> <laughs> so i got in trouble for that <laughs> But now, now I think they kind of like it. But I oh, just good. we we watch it probably a couple times like, each summer. Like like how it iconic is, is some more of what? Yeah, you're killing me, Smalls. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin, this is a movie you can actually talk about because you've seen it. The Sandlot. Yeah. So I would have been like really young when it came out. I do remember it, and I remember honestly the biggest thing I remember about it is being scared of the dog oh. in the backyard. <laughs> so that's how young I they was do, when I saw they it. They do make the dog extra scared, like that's until you watch it now, and then you're like, yeah. "Oh, that's really bad movie magic." <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about the real reason why, as adolescent men, we loved that movie was Wendy Peppercorn. Oh, well, that the outdoor uh, pool scene. So. Um, Squints Palidorus, I think. Yeah. He, uh, he, he, I've watched this movie a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he pretends to drown in the pool and oh, then the right, hot yeah. lifeguard saves him. Oh man, and he looks like get... a dead fish. <laughs> so the, the one thing I've noticed having kids is I'm watching these like early 90s movies that I watched as a kid and like all these Disney movies, they say shit like three, four times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And it's like a PG movie, which like not a big deal, but it's just like, oh man. Yeah. So different. But anyways, when he, kisses her and then at the end of the movie it's like they get married and have like eight kids yeah. it's just like it, that's the best in ending yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna i actually saw something on instagram today that the sandlot came out in 93 but it was based in 62 so that's 31 years oh. so we are 31 oh. years today to yeah. 1993 wow which sucks uh, because Dustin wasn't here, he still provided this one. I think, Walsh, this might be one of your favorites, too. Something you guys talk about. Uh, underrated summer movie is Summer Catch is that, uh, with Freddie Prinze yeah. Jr. and Jessica Biel. That's kind of like the... It's not a great movie, but it's still great. Tugs of the Heartstrings. Yeah. Jessica Biel's a babe, too. Yeah. <laughs> and Fez is in it. Fez. <laughs> really? Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Yeah. No, that's that's a, a, that's a great movie, too. So, that was it uh, for the responses we got. As always, thank you to everyone uh, for taking part in deer call and like i said keep an eye on our social media for the next one your next chance to win uh one of two 25 dollar gift cards let's talk about some surprising ones that were not mentioned uh no one said crossroads the britney spears movie <laughs> no one said the notebook the greatest love story of our time yeah that's mm. yeah it is in the summer like yeah. they have nice weather down there i guess and no one said eat pray love which just confirms that that's a garbage movie uh, yeah i've never seen that i don't think i is, is that all to. you had no Okay. Well, it, well, keep going. Keep going. That that's it for surprise. Like, oh, okay. not so surprising. Like terrible movies that mm-hmm. no one said. I have some good ones too, but I'll let. Okay. Well, you go ahead. Well, okay. I can't believe no one mentioned heavyweights. Oh <laughs> yes, I was thinking. I was thinking. Yeah. That. I just can't remember what it was called. With yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. Goldberg. Goldberg is in that yes. one. And uh, yeah, Ben a Stiller. Ben Stiller it's a in summer, one of his early summer roles. Camp. It's a summer. That's a good one. It's yep. a summer movie. Heavyweights. That's so. Cool. It's on Disney Plus. Yeah, Check it out. It's so good. It's uh, and it, it's funny. Like Ben Stiller is awesome in it, and. It is about, at the end of the day, it's about healthy body image yeah. and just being healthy. So, there you go. It's Yeah, it's that's a coming of age story yeah. too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, oh. Oh, that. and Keenan Thompson, like who's oh, like, yeah, probably the, the longest running SNL guy mm-hmm. ever. All the heavyweights in are in that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm on fire tonight. <laughs> um, I have a couple more. I want to see what you guys think, though. That that wasn't. Well, mentioned. I want to see if you if you say uh, the one. Oh I'm yeah, I've got I, I've got one. You go. Um, I know what you did last summer. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's right in the name. It's one of the yeah. first. It's <laughs> yeah. one of the first horror movies that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I got pretty scared too because. 
It's terrifying. It is terrifying, yeah. And you ever get out of the shower and just pray there's nothing written yeah, in your mirror? Yeah, all the, the time. In the steam, yeah. All the time. <laughs> Start doing that. Yeah. There's Another one about dead guys. Yeah. I mean, there's been a few horror movies that take place in the summertime. Yeah. But anyway, that was the one I was thinking of. Uh, mine is Wedding Crashers. Oh, which yeah, I guess. Could might be, not yeah. be considered, I guess, a summer movie. But to me, the weddings take place in the summer. The mm-hmm. football game the football game, and the quail hunting. Quail hunting, hunting all the yeah. Summer. Like, yeah. it is, to me, I would consider it a summer movie and. Yeah. And it's a classic. All right. I, I'm going to, I've got one guess that I think you're going to say that I, I actually had written down. Uh, no one said Blue Crush. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even the, uh, Is that where the shark eats her eats <laughs> her uh, leg or arm? No, that's like the true story. That's, yeah, it's the true story. Let's, let's not talk about that. No, she gets her arm bitten off. Yeah, that, no, that's Bethany Hamill. That's and then she like goes on to be story. like a good surfer. Yeah, Carrie Underwood's in that movie. No, this this is the one with like with Michelle Rodriguez and uh, oh, Kate Bosworth. It's just the uh, like three surfer girls in Hawaii and That's, they have the younger yeah. sister and stuff. And then the football player is in town like they're on a team retreat or whatever and they fall in love and she wins the big competition or doesn't or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> is that where that song came from? There's a, like the Blue Crush. There's a song. No. So, Cruel Summer was covered for that movie. But uh, that was a, I think that's a, it's a Bananarama song that Ace of Base also covered. Hmm. But I thought that might be the one. Uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. No. Nope. What about The Big Green? That was the other that's one. A good one. Yeah. That's a that's good one. That's a good one. But no, that's uh, not it. 51st Dates. Well, that is a summer yeah. movie. Well, I guess yeah. that's that's a a summer okay. movie. I, just, I, I actually enjoy that movie quite a bit. Yeah. No. So, mine would be American Pie 2. Ah, okay. Oh. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's no one say that. Yeah. That, yeah. I was yeah. shocked, actually. Any American um, Pie. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm a big American Pie guy, but yeah. uh, number band, two is band like camp. Yeah. their first year after college, yeah. they all come back to town, get together, and they're like, let's rent this cabin for the summer. Yeah. yeah. After that, they kind of go down a little bit yeah. in that series, but it comes back at the end. But um, yeah, I, that's good. Yeah, I can't believe everyone missed and that. killer soundtrack too. Mm. They they uh, yeah, actually all of them had, like had it. They all have some some forty one on yeah. there, and yeah, Blink one eighty two. Like, that's a good one. Yeah, like Stifler, one of the greatest characters oh, yeah. out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Uh, Hangover would could be considered a summer movie. Yeah, yeah. Going to Vegas. I mean, it's always nice in Vegas, except maybe December or January. Oh, do you know what no one said? And again, this is kind of it takes place through a whole school year kevin's definitely not seen this one is fast times at ridgemont high mm. that's just another great high school coming of age yeah. working your way towards summer movie like True. jeff spicoli oh what a yeah. character that's it that's it that's all the summer movies that's yeah that's all the good ones and some bad I, ones i guarantee in. you we missed about 35 good summer movies i mean I if you want to go not. like those kids 90s movies i mean like little giants oh yeah that could be like little that's giants a great movie it good. could be a summer angels movie. in the outfield yeah. 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 Can't hardly Rookie of the wait. Year. Oh, Can't uh, Hardly Wait is a big one. Yeah. Rookie yeah. of the Year. Oh, my goodness. We did miss a lot. Movies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Major D- or not. Well, Major League could be one. What's the one? Uh, Little Big League. Yeah. Is that the one where he's like the manager or owns the yep. team or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, D2. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. yeah they play in the they summer. Play roller yeah. hockey. Yeah. Junior Goodwill yeah. Games. Knuckle puck time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think what we've learned is any movie with sunshine yeah. could be yeah, considered yeah. a summer <laughs> movie. <laughs> And you probably haven't seen it. Or any that movie too. that you've watched in the summertime would also <laughs> fit. All right, Strybosh, your, your summer homework being the young guy is to watch a bunch of these movies and let us know what you think. And you have to rank them out of 30. I don't think there's 30 to watch. We'll find it. We'll find <laughs> enough. I'll find some sunny <laughs> movies. And- yeah. I, I still can't get over that you don't like Dazed and Confused. It's not that I don't like it. I just don't think it's anything super special. Oh. I thought it was good and I think I liked it a lot more in the past. But I- Watch it again. You'll like it. Maybe, Kay. probably. Watch it with Kevin because he hasn't seen anything. Okay, well, I'll have a date night, yeah. Kev. Okay. Anyways, that is it for Deer Call. Thank you again. <laughs> what do you mean, anyways? <laughs> You're the one that started the conversation. I <laughs> Man, I get, I just get in the zone yeah. and I'm trying to, trying to segue. And you Shut up. It. Yeah. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, that is it for Deer Call. Thank you as always to everyone uh, for, well, this time for giving Strybosh a long list of movies he needs to watch. Uh, now we're going to move in to a game. Uh, luckily for, well, both of the Kevins, it is not, or what did we call it? Gad Mabs. Uh, it is a word game. Uh, it's, we're going to play Taboo. Uh, we've done this before where we've made our own Central Alberta version of Taboo. This time I wasn't so on the ball. We're just going to play uh, the actual version of the game. But as always, we don't want to get sued. So I, I just put the word taboo into my thesaurus. Uh, so uh, we're going to play Unmentionables. Oh, that's good. I was going to call it tab don't, but that, <laughs> either way. Taboo, yeah. tab don't. Tab don't. <laughs> <laughs> we can go. We'll go with yours though. Yeah, I, th- I think Unmentionables works. Yeah. 
Unmentionables is brought to you by Recovery Lab, home of Central Alberta's only cryo spa. Recovery Lab is dedicated to your health, wellness, and recovery, offering a wide variety of services including physiotherapy and fascial stretch therapy. Head to myrecoverylab.ca to book your appointment today. How did I get that right? Yeah, I don't know, but you're done now. Cool. Get that out of here. Maybe next time you'll just babysit for Erin so she does, so you don't have to do that. That would yeah. be better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, I, I'm just now only realizing that unmentionables also means like underwear and bra, but whatever. We'll, we'll work with it. Uh, th- again, uh, this is a fun game to play. The rules really quick. Uh, it's going to be Lund and I on a team and the Kevins on a team. Uh, you guys are playing for kind of redemption too from last week. Uh, you, We're playing you, for all Kevins. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, at yeah, least okay. the two you of can, you. You can have them. We'll play for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. 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 But uh, last weekend, uh, both Kevins uh, lost in our game of Mad Gabs and they have to caddy for us for nine holes. Uh, at some point when London and I go golfing. So we're doing a double or nothing. So if you two win, you don't have to caddy. That's it. But if you lose, not only are you still going to have to caddy, but you're each going to have to cut uh, Mo, L- L- Mo Lund's lawn. Oh boy, we're going to do bad at this game. Mo Lund's lawn e- each once. And uh, whoever has to go first, it's pretty long right now. Yeah. And he's talking about my actual lawn. <laughs> Thank you. That was that was my question. Which one's longer? <laughs> the lawn. <laughs> That's great TV. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Rogers. That's part is I'm going to bleep you. <laughs> and think it's way worse. I'm not talking about my bleep. <laughs> it's not what you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just take it all out. I don't. I don't know. But uh, yeah, taboo. One person on your team is going to be the clue giver, and the other person is going to be the guesser. So we're each going to have a turn doing both. Uh, the word is going to come up. You have to try and get that person to guess the word without saying any version of the word or any version of the five unmentionable words, a tab don't words that are that are on there. And you can't gesture and you can't do rhymes with or anything. But uh, otherwise, pretty simple. Yeah, very straightforward. Everyone knows the rules. Everyone knows the stakes. Let's play unmentionables. All right. I think I think maybe Strybosh and I will switch seats just to make it easier for the administering part of this. Uh, right here we go. What a seamless switch. No one even knew. Let's warm. All right. The Kevins, you guys can choose if you want to go first or second. So you guys one are going to go, then we're going to go, then you're going to go again, then we're going to go, or vice versa, whatever you guys choose. So we're going to have four four words yeah. total. Everyone gets one chance to guess and one chance and to be the clue giver. And then if we're tied, we'll do a fifth round as a tiebreaker. Yeah. Okay. I think we make them go first. Mm-hmm. Now, Lundy, do you want to be the clue giver first? Or? You, be the, you be the clue giver since you have the phone. Okay. All right. Nice thing about this. It's all all timed on the phone and everything. So, Kevin, you can just basically make sure that I'm not saying any taboo words in that day. Unmentionable words. All right. Ready, Lund? I'm ready. All right. This is a uh, hot thing that you eat. It's liquid. There's many different Coffee, kinds. Coffee, no, tea. No, you eat when you're sick. Uh, tea. Um, uh, Lipton is a brand. Iced tea. No, Lipton. food. Noodle, chicken noodle soup. Chicken soup. noodle soup. soup. Chicken soup. Yeah. Um, okay, this is what you might call like a young, good-looking good girl, I guess. Babe. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld just made a movie about these. Oh, unfrosted. Pop, uh, Pop-Tart. Second word, yeah. Tart. Tart. I'm a little blank. Te- teapot. Short and stout. Um, all right, this is a... Insect that crawls around. Ant, spider. Uh, it, it becomes something beautiful. Uh, uh, caterpillar. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to lay out a, a an blanket egg. and have... Pink t- picnic. Yeah. Oh, uh, princess. Diana. No, it's, there's, I didn't have enough. Auto. There. It, was, it was Jasmine. Oh, yeah. I would have yeah. put in more. Okay, we got five. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Five that time. It was not bad. Soup took you a little longer. Yeah, than I know. I had, I had tea, on tea on my mind. I had yeah. tea on my mind. At least teapot came up. Yeah. All right, that's that's a pretty good. That's not a bad score, start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which of you wants to be the clue giver first? I'll, I will. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, there's roses come in this um, shade. Red, pink, white, pink. Uh, this is something that you eat. Um, it's a hearty meal, usually in the f- uh, winter months. Um, it's it's heavy meal. You pasta, meatloaf. You make uh, it in a s- slow cooker. Chili. Um, <laughs> pass. <laughs> nice. Get in his head. Yeah. Shit. Oh, uh, vampires hate this. Uh, garlic. Yep. Wow. 
Uh, this is where you would take your dog to get better. Veterinarian. Vet. Vet. Um, you are all about this eating is having a good um, eating habit. Health, healthy. Uh, oh, time's up. Oh. Diet. Oh, diet. <laughs> you got three. <sighs> Thought we got Where, more this is one I missed in the cro- like a uh, slow cooker. Oh, uh, chili? stew. Uh, you could have said uh, thick did soup. Did you say chili? Yeah. yeah. I, said, I said chili. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. So we're up 5-3, Lund. If I remember, you're, you were not the best clue giver in the past. Well, but if I, I remember, you, you were not the best guesser in the past. So we're tied. <laughs> All right, this uh, is a piece of bread that we got at the end of the sun run. A croissant. Yeah. Oh, bonfire. Marshmallow s'mores. Yeah, marshmallow. (laughs) Good guess. This is what the Kevins are going to have to do if they lose. Mow the lawn, cut the grass. And they're going to use this tool. Lawn mower. Yep. It's very slow on that. Pass. When you, when someone dies and they don't movie want to be buried, so, cremated, cremation, and what, burn, and ashes. where do you, sp- yeah, nice. <laughs> oh, that stuff. sniff, phlegm. Ah, time's up. Sneeze, cocaine. <laughs> it was a, it was aroma, aroma, but I couldn't say aroma. smell. How many did we got? Oh, you got four, four there. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we lost oh, a lot of time with you just hitting the green button. There. <laughs> yeah. What's in the quickest? Need six. Or you need six. Oh, no one's ever got six before. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Um, deli- <laughs> delicious. Uh, Pizza. Delicio. <laughs> um, that country. Um, uh, Italy. Italian. Stringy. Meatballs. Spaghetti. Um, more spaghetti broad. and meatballs. More broad. Like, Pasta. Yeah. Uh, Pina colada, you put like one of these. Umbrella. Uh, uh, drink uh, sweet. a sweet. Like, oh my goodness. A cherry? No. <laughs> uh, prickly on the outside. Pineapple. Coconut. Just pineapple. Um, <laughs> not an apple. Orange. Uh, but a different one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's got a... The certain, shape of my body. Peach, pear. Shape of my, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh... Not a oh, that's tough. Um, that to is a tough think, one. Yeah. I was trying to think of the <laughs> six to nine though. Nice. Oh, it's <laughs> over. We won. Yeah, yeah we won. Let's that was go. We get two free lawn mows. <laughs> no redemption for the cat and the yeah. caddies. That's fine. We're gonna go. Um, I think we're gonna go watch some minion movies. And learn yeah. from Kevin the Minion because <laughs> he is the leader. Um, <laughs> he don't speak good English. Either, no, but oh, he's yeah. made Kevin's popular again. Mm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. So maybe yeah, you guys aren't doing much for the, in these no. games. That's yeah. true. No. no. You know what? You'll learn from this. You'll get better. <laughs> It'll grow. And hopefully it's nice too. I think people like, obviously when we're doing these games, play along and see see how you it's can do tricky. it. It's tricky. It's tricky. Once you like see the word and you have this one word in your head mm-hmm. and you realize you can't say that word. Yeah. And you're, then you're stuck. Yeah. Pasta really hung you up. Uh, those it, carbs. It, you couldn't yeah. figure. You got yeah. a lot of food ones too. I like the, uh, I like the, the pear. Delicious. No, no. I like Delicious. the, pe- the pear. The, the apple. The, the apple. Word, uh, it's like yeah, an apple, but like something else. It's another one of <laughs> those. <laughs> yeah. I was, I thought. It, I knew you were going to say I knew orange. Going, I knew yeah. you were going to say orange and I was like, not an orange, orange but like yeah. the next one. And obviously you couldn't say fruit. Yeah. I just like that. Delicious. Delicious. Delicio. And then you almost got there with pizza. Then started with pizza. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, and we're on a roll. Two and oh, yeah. two. Well, I don't know. I can't remember past the last, last one. Last two we're, episodes were two and oh. Two I think and you oh. won the game the last time too. But uh, hey, that just about does it for this episode. Uh, so as always, just wrap things up with everyone's final thoughts. Uh, I was ready to redeem myself in the game <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do that. And I've also seen zero movies. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to chalk this one up as another L. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those movies are delicious, though. So if if I could describe them in one word, <laughs> I would uh, I would just like to congratulate the Edmonton Oilers on their Stanley Cup. Whoa! And uh, just for anyone going camping uh, this summer, uh, enjoy it. Hopefully, get some good weather. And uh, let's let's hope uh, the rest of June and the rest of July is going to be a blast. Uh, you guys are probably pretty happy. You don't have to mow your lawn for like the next month. Yeah, so. we probably wouldn't have anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like win. how Lund continually is like, come tomorrow. 
<laughs> it is. It's well. Every time we even think about mowing, it's rained. So that's our excuse. It's not, it's not supposed to rain tomorrow, though. <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow would be a good day. Yeah, just get it out of the way. Yeah. Come hang out. Come hang out for a beer. Okay, we'll talk. Yeah. Well, we're talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> come, come tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. That is it. That's all. A uh, thank you so much again to our episode 39 sponsor, Hebe Beauty Bar and to Kendra and Samantha for well, what we can assume was not just a great interview, but a very unique experience in a world that uh, all of us, with the exception of co-worker Aaron, uh, knew very little about. Thank you as always to our presenting sponsor, Bose Bar and Stage, and of course to Riley for having us once again at Communal Creative Studios. And as always, last but not least, thank you to you for tuning in once again. For Ryan Lund, Kevin Walsh, and the athlete Kevin Strybosch, I'm Ted Emmett, and we'll see you next time. Get to bed, Sharon.